Hello there and a very good morning to you. Welcome to Sewing Street. My name's Debbie Shaw and I'm going to be with you live here for the next three hours. We have, we've got some new things for you as well. So we've got lots of fabrics. You've got some of your favourites from previous. We have an early bird special for those of you that are up with me nice and early at eight o'clock this morning. Uh, coming up in the next hour, we're going to be doing some fabric slashing with a special tool that you might not have seen before. And then we've got a brand new sewing machine launch at, uh, at 10 o'clock. So we've got a very busy morning this morning. Um, I mentioned the early bird though, so let's take a look at this first of all. The idea with an early bird is that just to say, oh, hello, good morning. Thank you for getting up early with us this morning. We've brought you a product that we've reduced the price of. And we try and do this every day. And we'll keep this price low as long as we have the stock. So sometimes this lasts for 15 minutes, sometimes it'll last all day, sometimes it'll last for weeks. But as long as we have the stock, we keep that price down for you. Once you've placed your order and you pay you £3.95 postage, we're not then going to charge you any more postage throughout the day. So if you come back later and you think, oh, that fabric slasher, that's another three ninety five postage. No, it's not. Uh, we process all of the orders at midnight tonight. So as long as you order before midnight, we'll take into account all of your orders and just charge you one PMP for the whole day. So you can save a lot of money there, even with the sewing, uh, this sewing machine, I can't lift it, it's so heavy. So imagine what that would be to post. But if you buy your early bird, you're not paying any, it's like having free P&P. Um, so these are they, we've got storage. I love a bit of storage. I like to be organized. I like to be able to see where everything is, even the little bits and bobs, like my eyelet rings and thimbles and my clover wonder clips and my bobbins and my buttons, or it could be sequins or it could be tiny seed beads um, and if you travel anywhere or if you're allowed to, if we're ever allowed to travel ever again um, these are handy kind of handbag sizes so useful small storage to keep in your bag to keep portable and we've got a great price for you as well and again we've taken three pounds off the price these getting both of them are only four pounds and 98 pence you can order as many as you like so if you want to come back and um, order more later then you can do you can join them all together look so you could you could build a fort <laughs> but I just like that they do go in properly I know I've bent that a little bit um, <laughs> that's not so clever um, and they unscrew all individually as well so you've got individual little pots so if they're handy they're compact they're useful you can see in them that's the most important thing you can identify where your bits and bobs are and these things, filling up this this morning, I have um, uh, like a toolbox that I keep all my sewing bits and bobs in and it uh, opens up like this. These are all the bits and bobs that were rattling around in the bottom of my box, which isn't very well organised, is it? So I'd keep this in my sewing box with my little bits and bobs in, um, just to make sure that I don't lose them. Because if you, if you misplace things or you're not, you're not too organised with um, the order of your products in your sewing room, you tend to buy it again because you can't find something. So at least I know now. I mean, I didn't even know I had those little curtain rings, to be honest. But I know I've got them there, so if I need them, I can go to them instead of going out and buying more. So again, if you'd like to order, it's um, 0800 001 4433 if you order on the phone lines. You can visit our website, which is sewingstreet.tv. Oh, on the website, by the way, it'll only show you one of those, but you do get two. So don't worry about that, you do get the both of those for your £4.98. Now, if you'd like to um, come and be part of the shows today, come and say hello, what are you doing? Um, is it the first time you've seen us this morning, maybe? How are you passing the time these days? If you go to our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV, and then you go to the visitor post, that's where I am at the moment. So come and say hello, even if it's just a good morning, let's, um, let's be interactive this morning. If you've got any questions, if you have any pictures to show, it would be lovely to hear from you this morning. Just let me know what you're up to, what's your weather like. It was actually foggy when I came in this morning, freezing cold when I got up, I had the, the, um, the heated seats on and everything, and um, then yeah, foggy on the way over. So apparently it's going to be not quite as nice as it was yesterday, which is fine because I burnt my nose. So that's your early bird, um, as long as we have the stock, £3 saving. So £4.98 if you'd like to order again, website or the phone number down there at the bottom of your screen. Now we have more for you though. We have Ditsy Fabric. Um, oh, sorry. Teasing you what's coming up later on. 
I'm only teasing. I'm not showing close up or anything, just teasing. This is coming up at half past. We have fabric labels. So if you, um, if you're quilt making, isn't it important to label the quilt, to put your name on there? Because that quilt's probably going to be around for a lot longer than you are. Um, but maybe you're bag making, maybe you're making things to a gift or you're making things to sell. You can embroider onto these, you can use a fabric pen on these. Um, just cut them out, put some um, maybe heat and bond or something like that on the back and stick them also until, to whatever it is that you're making. So we're calling them quilt labels, but you want to label anything that you're making. Really, and we've got lots of different sizes there as well. But that's coming up at half past. Or you can have a look on the website. Now we have some fabric bundles for you. And these are your core fabrics. So not as in core, but as in the kind of things that are just worth having in your stash. And these are the green selections. So you've got the mint green, there's a turquoise, um, a forest green. I love that colour. That's a very elegant, mossy kind of green. So all four of those, you've got half a metre in each one, so that's two metres in total. 100% cotton, really useful colours for £12.99. I'll just show you what it looks like and how wide it is. Nice quality, it's not a flimsy cotton, it's not a, a stiff cotton. 112 centimetres wide and half a metre. Um, we've got a few bundles of these, we've got four to be precise, and they're already going very quickly on the website. Again, they're only £12.99. Lovely colours and lovely quality as well. You won't be disappointed when you get these home. So, bag making, linings, quilting, backs of cushion covers. Got a cushion cover kit coming up in the next one. Um, and if you're quilting, these are the kind of colours that make your pattern fabric go that little bit further. So, for instance, if you've got a lovely pattern fabric like this one, and you just want to break it up, doesn't that go so well with the greens? Doesn't that go so well with the turquoise? And it'll go really well with the pinks as well. We've got that coming up later. So that's why these are useful to just, to just have, to just have in your stash. So those are the greens at £12.99. We have Sunset. I'm not thinking Sunset, I'm thinking te Tequila Sunrise myself. Um, again, you've got four pieces for your £12.99. So a bright orange, a lovely buttermilky kind of cream. And then you've got the daffodil yellow and a salmon pink. Candy colours, aren't they? but bright, happy colours, which again will break up your pattern fabric um, and just, again, useful to have in your stash. Two metres you've got there in total. Remember, they're 112 centimetres wide. It goes nice with that. Very rarely would I buy one piece of fabric. So if I go into a fabric store, if I'm shopping online, I'll try and match up. Well, that would go with that, that would go with that. Because if I'm, if I'm making a bag, I make a lot of bags, I might have one fabric for the outer, another one for a flap, and then another one for the lining, and it's so nice when everything coordinates so well. Or if it's homewares even, if I'm making a pair of oven gloves, I'd have the bias binding in a different colour of the fabric. So there's just so many uses, so many reasons why you need a stash of core fabrics like these. And there's a great summertime colours as well, uplifting colours, happy colours, smile on your face colours. <laughs> Now, you could even make um, summer clothing out of this. So maybe um, a little patchwork dress or a pair of shorts or a shirt for your, for your little ones. And affordable fabrics if you're teaching somebody how to sew as well, because if things go horribly wrong, you're not wasting too much. So again, all four of those are £12.99. Then we have the blues. The colour of the sky. It looks like it's sea, doesn't it? So pale blue, the royal, navy, and you've got the turquoise there as well. Really clean, crisp colours. Look nice with white, those, wouldn't they? Really smart kind of look. Oh, 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 the sunset. Just need to nip back a second because the sunset ones were now down to single figures. I told you it was busy on the website this morning. Um, so if you wanted to order, could you do it now? Otherwise, you may miss out. Only £12.99. You can order on the phones. You can order on the website this morning. 
So quick reminder of the blues again. So pale blue and royal and a French navy and a gorgeous bright turquoise. And again, there's £12.99. And, and then finally, we've got berries. These would look nice. Any of them, I think, without fabrics. It really pulls out these colours. In fact, that's, I think that's a must have. If you're going to go for this fabric, you probably found that on the website already. Um, I would go for that. Mind you, the daisy look. Look at the daisy with that. So we have raspberry, pomegranate, amethyst, and fuchsia. Half a metre of each, two metres in total. All at 100% cotton, and it's a nice cotton. It's not one of those, it's not a stiff cotton. It drapes really well. It's not a transparent cotton. So if you are using these for attire, you can't see me through there, and there's quite bright lights in the studio. So it's got a good density. I love different shades of pink. You, you would think that um, different shades of pink would clash together, but they don't. I think because they're all cool colours, if that makes sense. There's not a warm pink in there. They're all cool, so they, it works really well together. Actually, that would look nice with that as well. So I'm doing all your shopping for you here, or they, even with the dog's look. Yeah. Um, okay, £12.99. You've got your four choices there. Have a look on the website now for a, a quick reminder, if you wish. We have a Tilda Fat Bundle Quarter. Fat Quarter Bundle. These are um, the Apple Butter Collection. Um, and you're getting all of those tied up in a ribbon. So you've got 10 pieces in total. And these are they. And Tilda Fabric, we know. You, you, it's, the, it's one of those names that you just know that you're going to get the quality. You know what Tilda Fabric's going to feel like. You know how it's going to handle. You know what it's going to be like to work with. And you know the kind of results you're going to get from whatever project it is that you're making. And these are kind of a core section. Some are plain, some are patterned. So you've got the pinks and the yellows. And then the teals. Tiny patterns on these as well, which is perfect if you're making smaller projects. Maybe you are English paper piecing. These would make a lovely quilt. And I think there's a lot of you English paper piecing at the moment because it's something that you're lucky enough to have a garden or a balcony. You can actually take it outside and enjoy the sunshine without taking a, a cumbersome sewing machine anywhere with you. There you go. There's a complete fan. And just to show you a size of a fat quarter, if you're, if you're new, I don't know what a fat quarter is. It's that. So it's, the, it's a half a metre, but then cut in half, so you've got that way, so four quarters like that. Um, they vary in size depending on the width of the fabric. In general, you'll find them 18 inches um, by uh, 22. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger, sometimes they're a little bit smaller. But lovely, really, it's really lovely quality fabric. It's got a nice sheen to it as well. And I think that's a sign of a, um, a very fine thread. A very fine thread and lots of them gives you the softness, it gives you density, but it also gives you a really nice sheen. It's got quite an expensive look, that one. So 10 pieces for £31.99. £3.20 each for Tilda fabric. You know, you would expect, I think, for any old fat quarter to be paying three pounds. So I think three pounds twenty for Tilda is amazing value. Again, you can order on the website, you can order on the phone lines, you can multi-order. If you've got a particular project in mind, maybe it is a, a larger quilt you want to go for, that's how they're going to come to you. That's a nice gift idea as well, if you know somebody that sews. Because it looks really nice, doesn't it, when, when the package is opened and the wrapping is off and you're presented with Tilda. Oh, right. Um, let me give you a reminder of the Sunset Core fabrics. We really only have a handful left of these now. Um, four half metres in oranges and creams and yellows and pinks. Beautiful, bright, fresh, 100% cotton. Really useful fabrics to have in your stash. What are you going to make with them? Love to know. 
what you're working on at the moment, what you'd like to, maybe it's a new skill, um, maybe sewing is a new skill for you altogether. You've been watching the sewing bee or Kirsty crafting, so I'm gonna have a go at that. Um, what are you making? What's your first project? And if you're a seasoned sewer, what was the first thing you ever made? I can't remember, that. I can remember tying a bow, um, which would probably have been, I know it was on a, on a quite a big doll, so mum probably made the hat and I just remember tying the bow. I must have been about four. I was so pleased with myself. Uh, but I used to make dolls clothes. I had the best dress, Windy Miller. Couture, don't you know? I used to knit polar neck sweaters for him as well. <laughs> um, right, these are the Ditsy Daisies. Um, this isn't a bundle, they're available individually, so you're getting half a metre, but if you order more than one half metre, they all come joined up. So that would make a lovely summer dress, wouldn't it? And it's only £4.99. pence. This is the aqua, so white daisies on aqua. Um, but I'm thinking strappy dresses, maybe with a bit of shearing elastic around the top, um, or a pinafore style of dress would be really nice and cool. Maybe a pair of shorts, crop trousers. So much you can do with it. And again, you've got a nice quality of fabric here as well. Feels nice, drapes well. There you go. So yeah, so if you do order more than one, you'll probably be able to order up to 10 metres because that's normally what you get on a bolt. Um, but we will cut it. Oh, that's wide as well. Oh, now then, that's about 140 centimetres wide. So that is perfect for dressmaking. Poplin weight, so nice drape to it. Blouse would be nice, wouldn't it? I love this colour as well. My favourite colour is blues. For clothing, my favourite colour is blues. Yes, that's, I'm thinking skirts. Maybe a skirt. A skirt and a blouse to match. But you could use these for homewares as well. If you're going to make um, curtains or blinds or things like that, I'd put some stabilizers on the back of it just to give it a little bit of depth or a lining maybe, but a nice summer, a nice pair of summer curtains would be lovely, wouldn't it? So that's the, the blue one, aqua. <laughs> we also have a navy, which is this one. Again, by the half a metre, so if you think, nope, I, I want a navy blouse, then this would be perfect for you. Tiny little daisies looking tiny little leaves. Really pretty. And, you know, a lot of us like to wear dark colours. You feel more comfortable in dark colours. Um, but this is like a dark summery colour with the flowers. So pretty. That would look nice with red, wouldn't it? Or you could mix, could you mix and match? I would top in that one, skirt in that one, and then a white belt, just to break it up a little bit. Or just a dress made out of that with a red belt. That'd look nice, wouldn't it? Oh, the sunset bundle, by the way, it's sold out now. Well done, we'd like a bargain. So, the final colour we have here is the pink. Which goes very well with the berry option of the, um, of the core fabrics. That would work really well. Um, so a dark grey. You've got grey leaves on this one with white flowers. But it's, um, it's quite a sophisticated colour, I think. I was actually going to with that. Or with the grey, or with the white. No problem for quilting with this one, if that's what you prefer. It doesn't have to be for dressmaking. No reason why you couldn't use this as a, a lining in a jacket or a lining in a bag. No reason why you can't use this for homewares as well. Or maybe you just think, I just love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Do you do that with fabric? I, I do. If I, see a, if I see a fabric I like, I just buy it. Normally not enough of whatever it is. But I find if I, um, if I go out specifically looking for, you know, if I've got in my mouth, I want a fabric that looks like this, you never find it, do you? It's like when, you, when, you, when we used to, you remember going shopping? When we used to go shopping for clothes, um, I think, right, I want a dress and I want it like this and I want the zip there and I want pocket, you never find it. And it's the same as fabric. So I do tend to find if I, if I see a fabric that I like, I'll just buy it. And then forget about it and then get all excited when I find it again. Um, oh, Andrea's messaged in. Hi, Andrea. 
Oh, gotcha. Uh, she says, good morning, Debbie from South Lincolnshire. No fog, but cloudy and a bit chilly. Loving the fabrics this morning. Morning, Andrea. Lovely to hear from you as well. Uh, that's, that's my direction, so glad the fog's gone. It was, it was foggy. Foggy and dark. Not, not so fun. Right, let's move on. What should we show you? Bunnies and flowers. Let's have a look at these. These are cute. Again, by the half metre. Oh, drawstring bags to keep the kids' toys in. What about um, uh, laundry baskets um, or laundry bags, that kind of thing? Something to hang up on the back of the door. These are so pretty. Uh, Non-directional, uh, which means that you can use this any way round. And there's, <laughs> there's a lot of fabric to buy for buttons, but wouldn't these be lovely if you just covered some buttons with a little bunny face on them? Again, it's £4.99. It's called Duck Egg. So you've got tulips and flowers in the background. And again, it's nice and soft. So even if you're making smaller things, hair buns, scrunchies, those are great projects for beginners, actually. So simple to make. <laughs> or if you've got um, any of the uh, My Half Yard books or Wendy Gardner's Two Fat Quarter books, if you're stuck for ideas for smaller projects, there's an awful lot out there. Again, it's 140 wide. So it's kind of a, normally the 140s dressmaking fabric, so that's the kind of quality. So again, it's a, it's a poplin. But it's a pretty colour, isn't it? Boys or girls, I think, for that one. And it gets only £4.99. <gasps> you love this one. Let's move it on. Before I show you the ochre, just snipping back to because we're having a busy morning this morning. Um, the aqua in the days is a third of the stock sold out there. That's going really, really quickly. What are you going to make? Are you thinking dressmaking? Are you quilting? Are you home wires? Are you curtain making? Love to know. So be quick for that one. Third of the stock's gone straight away the first time you've seen it. So let's move on. We've got more bunnies. This is the ochre. This is such a popular colour. Whether we bring you um, the faux leathers or canvas fabric, they're just, this colour just seems to fly off the shelves. So we, we're very much on trend this morning, I think. But isn't it fun with the rabbits there as well? They look like um, a, a naive sketch, like a child's drawn them. I think they're so pretty. I love the little hearts in the background as well. Again, you've got half a metre if you wanted to order more. So maybe you're thinking curtains for a, a child's bedroom or you're making baby quilts and that kind of thing. You, it comes all in one piece. So £4.99 for half a metre if you want to order, say, two metres, just order four units and they'll all come joined up together. And finally, we've got the bunnies on white. So we've got pink flowers on this one. And little bunny outlines. No reason why you couldn't mix them up and go for a couple together. I think that would work with any of them, to be honest. Oh, that's nice. I like those two together. Um, again, £4.99, 100% cotton. And really wide, 140 wide. Right. So we've got, still got more to show you. What should we have a look at? We've got some glues. We've got some hand creams. We've got a mini pressing board. We've got a message from Rosalind. Is she on here? Oh, no. And Rosalind says, lovely to see you this morning, lovely to see you too. Well, lovely to hear from you too. Uh, she says, we've got some lovely fabrics, thank you very much, I think so. Um, and she said, because we're saving so much, it's a big help to have all of the extra fabrics. I, th I think so, you can never have, well, you can't sew without it really, can you? So it's nice to have so much, it's nice to have so many. And it's nice to have such good quality as well. That's the one thing that we do bring you at Sewing Street a lot is, is big names of fabrics. You know, we've got the Modas, we've got the Liberties, we've got the Tildes. So we, we kind of pride ourselves on, on quality fabrics here. Right, we do have, coming up later on, we've got the quilt labels. If you wanted to get ahead of the game, take a look on the website. So if you can't wait for me, go and have a look at um, sewingstreet.com. These, I'm sure, are going to be so very, very popular. They're really pretty as well, blues and pinks and greys. So, yeah. But we'll have a, 
We'll have a look at those in about five minutes. That's scheduled in for half past. That's what we decided in rehearsals. <laughs> right, let's have a look at French Bulldogs. Look at these chaps. Mm. I love the colours that have been used here as well. I think the, uh, the little ginger chap there in the middle, if you've got one of those um, ochre, the yellow kind of mustardy colours, I think that would really draw those colours out. Aren't they beautiful? The little faces. My next door neighbour's got a couple of these. They're, they're so lovely. Um, anyway, £4.99 is your price there. And I don't think it matters, you know, that a lot of the time when you see a specific breed of dog, well, I haven't got that breed of dog, um, but these are just so cute, I don't think it matters. So maybe you're making something for your pet, is it a bandana? Is it going to be storage, maybe storage boxes? Again, it's a wide fabric, oh gosh, that's even wider. So if you are... If you are dressmaking, that would be loads of fun, wouldn't it? I would, I would imagine a shirt. For my co-presenter John, I think would look fabulous in that. Very much a, a John type of shirt, that one. <laughs> but we have to do a, a cat equivalent, won't, won't we? Um, you may hear us, as mentioned, the, the team here quite a lot, because we are a small group. And uh, Hayley B is our head of marketing. She's probably watching at home. She'll see uh, messages coming up on Facebook. She's in charge of sending out emails and things like that. So we could, could make her a little dress out of this, couldn't we? Because she's got one of these dogs. A gathered skirt, I think, with a, a deep waistband and big pockets. And maybe with a black or no, a very dark grey border, big thick border around the bottom of the hemline would look really nice, wouldn't it? Very stylish. 100% cotton again. And only £4.99. So that's your French Bulldogs on white. And the little pink ears. Oh, there was a little dog out yesterday. We went, went to feed the ducks. The grandchildren had to feed the ducks in the, the village duck pond. And uh, they were walking their 10-week-old Labrador. And my daughter said, you can't go and stroke it. I thought, no, I know. Once upon a time, I would be straight into the puppy. Not allowed to now, are we? Not unless it's yours, of course. Um, all right, this is lemurs and flowers on white. Who would have thought a fabric with lemurs on would be pretty? But isn't it lovely? We've got... Um... Oh, gosh, what are those flowers? Oh, that's really going to bug me now. My, um... My friend Ruth has a whole hedge of these. And they've got quite a story to them as well. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll remember it a minute past 11 o'clock, won't I? Oh. Um, and we've got Pink Blossom there as well. Um, and Lima's on Twitter. I think it's the colours on this one. I like all of the detail. I like all of the fuss that's in the background of the, the tiny flowers and the detail on the flowers. Um, is it a passion flower? Um, and I love the colours, I love the pinks and the purples. It is a passion flower. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I remember that because I will be spending the next three hours here thinking out loud and driving you all mad at home because you're all shouting at your screens, no doubt. Um, but loads of detail in it. But I love the pinks and, that, and the way that you can just mix with, so I'm doing it again, the way that you can mix with so many different colours. So put it with pink and the pinks are going to pop. I've got pop. Oh, no, 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 no. Put it with the purple. The amethyst, we're calling this one. That would look lovely, wouldn't it? So with um, maybe making cushion covers, that would be lovely. How about for the conservatoire? On a bright sunny day and you've got lovely bold colours like these and cushion covers and seat covers and the likes. Remember, it is by the half metre, so... If you order more than one, you can be making tablecloths, you can be making curtains. Maybe those cafe curtains that only come halfway up your windows would be pretty. You can be dressmaking with it, you can be quilting with it. It's yours, you do what you like. And again, it's only £4.99. Now, we did say that in, in rehearsals, 
Um, it takes us days to rehearse these shows, you can imagine. I've had to learn a script and, oh. We decided at half past we're going to show you the panel. So here you go, you can order them now. Um, we've got two choices. This is the blue. And you have two, four, six. Oh, you've got lots. <laughs> you've got lots of panels. So some of the larger ones, they say handmade. They say stitched with love, handmade with love, um, made with love. And then you've just got some plainer ones there as well. There's the smaller ones, corner um, panels. And again, you can free motion embroider on here. Um, you could write on there with um, a fabric pen. And in fact, you could use one of your um, Aero Water erasable pens and iron it because they become permanent, but on those occasions you want them to. So this is the Blue Hearts panel. You can see tiny hearts in the background, but there's some grey on there. I love the colour of the, um, um, like an ecru in the background, so they're not too stark. But it's important, isn't it? You spend all of that time making a quilt, no matter what size it is, whether it's your first quilt or you're a seasoned quilter. Um, I think it's so nice to be able to label that. Label it with your washing instructions and label it with who made it and maybe who you made it for because that quilt is going to be around for a, a lot longer than you are. So it's just nice when somebody else um, inherits the quilt or picks up the quilt to see who actually made it. So that's important. Right, so you get one. They might, might show you two on the website, but we're not giving you two. No, no, no not for 7 99 we're not. Um, this is the pink option. So just the same, some with the grey background, some with the pink, and it's just £7.99. Um, have a look at those little ones as well, because they've got little um, sentiments on there, handmade by, made with love. So you don't have to um, put your name on there, on all of them. But these are nice to just go on ribbons as well. So we're calling them quilt labels, but you can label anything you like, anything that you're proud of, anything that you've made that you can gift. So that could be anything from a, I don't know, a jacket to a handbag. And it gives a nice, nice finishing touch, but I think it gives a professional finish to it as well. So again, £7.99. All printed on cotton, exclusive to sewing quarter as well, so you can't go shopping around and price comparing with this one. You won't find them anywhere else but here. And I should let you know how many there are, shouldn't I? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 27. 27 panels altogether. Pink's your favourite. It's a lovely pastel print. I mean, if you are a quilter, it would be worth going for both of them, wouldn't it? Because you've got them then. So if, you, if you're making pink themed quilts at the moment and then sometime in the future, I should have got that blue one because I'm working with blues now, um, then may as well while we're there. So those are the, the two together. They're not too much different. They've both got greys in. They've both got the cream colour in the background. But yeah, stuck up on those. All right. Um, with the berry collection of your core fabrics, we've got less than 20 of these now. Those are going really quickly as well. There's four half metres here, so you've got two metres in total. All 100% cotton. These are 112 centimetres in width, and they're, they're a quilting cotton kind of weight for just £12.99. So, should we, do, should we do something that's not fabric? Should we do glue? This, I get through so much of this glue. Um, it's a Gutterman HT2. Honestly, I buy it in bulk. Um, I use it for bag making. It's incredibly strong. So if you've got a, a, a glue in bag frame, um, this is the glue that you're going to use to hold it in. I shall show you that in just a second because it doesn't come out again. Um, but I also use this glue if I'm, um, if I'm making anything with buttons on, not, not clothing, but if I'm using buttons as eyes on a teddy bear or I've just been making some play mats and they had, um, they got buttons and all kinds of bits and bobs on there. If I want something to be really, really secure, I put some Gutterman behind it um, because they just don't come off. If you're using any kind of embellishments, maybe you've got um, heavy applique shapes, maybe you're using like a faux leather flower and you want to stick that to the front of a bag flap, that's the glue that you're going to use. And it's so strong. It takes a while to dry because it's wet. Um, 
and it's clear but you'll find that if you try and I'll show you if you try and tear two pieces of fabric apart the fabric will tear the glue won't give um, this is a bag that I made and it's got a sew-in frame but I didn't want to sew it in because it took ages so I, I put the stitches through the frame and then I glued in the bag into the frame and then I thought you know I want that frame back again I wanted to put it on another bag it will not come out of this I tried so hard to get the frame out because frames can be really expensive and there is no way and that's not stitch that's just a faux stitching but this is absolutely stuck um, which is brilliant for bag making because if I'm carrying something heavy I don't want to risk you know the glue not being strong enough to hold that in there so do put um, the lid on really important put the lid on every time you finish because it dries up on the end and you won't be able to get it back out again um, and it does run a bit so I'm just being honest with you I better not use that one had I have I got mine Mine's in my box. Um, as soon as you finish putting the glue on, put the lid back on because it, it dribbles a bit. If you get this onto your uh, cutting mat, make sure you wipe it off straight away because you'll have a really solid lump of glue on there. Um, but that's the whole idea. It's a really, really strong glue. I'll go for a few of them. <laughs> so again, it does dry clear. Now I've got them all over my rulers and everything. It won't come off. But that's the whole idea. It's really, really strong. So anything fabric-wise, I'll tell you what else I do. I'm, as I said before, I make a lot of bags. Um, where handles go on, like here. So that's sewn, but behind there, there will be a blob of glue. And you can just about see that, actually. Be I don't sew through it, if I can help it, but I will put a, a blob of glue there, because, again, that's the area on a bag where there's going to be stress. Um, and it gives it extra strength. Also, if I'm using the kind of handles that come on here, you know, like the prim ones that we've got on the website, the, the leather ones, um, and they, they're kind of folded up and the edges go round like that. I always glue them on before I sew them on, because you can't pin those, they're so thick. And if you just start sewing, you tend to find that they move a little bit. So not where the stitches are going to go, so not where the needle goes into the fabric, so that would just be really tough. But I'll just put a dot of glue just in the centre. Um, to hold them before I sew and again it makes it easier to sew but it strengthens the bond as well it strengthens the seam so I think you're going to be if you haven't used it before just try but again but just be wary um, if it gets on the table it'll stay on the table <laughs> um, only five pounds 99 um, let's show you first time we've had that on sewing street Right, this, you know we were saying earlier on, if you're watching at 8 o'clock this morning, we had the early bird and we keep the price low for as long as we have the stock. We've still got an early bird from a few days ago, still at a reduced price. And it's the, uh, the beehive honey, honey, it's the bee, look, just that. <laughs> so it explodes, you, you get all these bits and bobs, I'm not sure about those two pins, but you get all the bits and bobs. So there's the thread, you're getting some scissors included, tape measures, quick and pick and your needle threader and there's a pin cushion in the centre um, and then the whole thing folds up your lid goes on and that's just a really cute sewing box love the fabric and the colours it's got a very organic feeling to it with the um the canvas that it's covered in and it's 17 pounds 99 well it's a saving of five pounds for a start um but i think that would make a lovely gift so as somebody that you know who sews or starting to sew or even just as a general you need all these things anyway, don't you? Even if you don't sew, it's your repair kit. It's like your first aid kit for your wardrobe. And there's enough room to put some little bits and bobs in there as well. So all of that for £17.99 while we have the stock. We do have other bits and bobs that match. You may have seen them knocking around the studio. So again, if you have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com, you can take a look at, uh, there you go, all the other bits and bobs that match as well. White daisies on aqua, summer dresses coming up. We've only got five metres of this one left. I, I fancy a pinafore, so maybe the fitted bodice. 
and then big pockets on there. I think that would be lovely for summertime. Or maybe a nice little shift dress. Or no, a maxi. Oh, make your own maxi. It's not £17.99 though. <laughs> but really pretty. It, it is a poplin weight, so it's a, it's a nice dressmaking fabric and it's, it's wide as well, so you've got 140 wide. It's only £4.99 with your three ninety five all day postage. We are so good to you. Um, but it's nice and lightweight as well, but it's not see-through, it's not stiff, it's got a really lovely drape as you can see. So if you're making something that's gathered, maybe it's got puff sleeves or sleeves with frills around, you know, when this like, like here, really popular, aren't they? So it will gather, it will drape really well. So nice and easy to sew and I would imagine a pleasure to wear because it's 100% cotton and it's nice and light and cool as well. But not much of that one left. Let's go really quickly. Five metres left of that one. Right, we have, shall I show you that pink cushion actually while we're there? Because this is, this is cute. Um, it's a nice, I like a pink cushion with a solid base. I'm, fuss, I'm fussy about pink cushions. Well, they're one of those tools that you use every day when, you, when you're sewing. So I like a pink cushion where I can identify the pins. And I don't want one that's going to roll all over my table. I want to know where it is and I want to be able to see it. And I'm not one for, for fiddly pink cushions. Um, and I do love the bees. I think bees are the new owls. Anything with bees on seems really popular at the moment. Only £9.99 and it's quite nice, I think, to have um, your sewing room coordinated. So maybe you could have a, a bee theme in your sewing room. <laughs> Again, £9.99. <laughs> and I mentioned our, our team. Um, Joe is directing, he's next door there. Um, Hannah is producing from home. And I did, <laughs> we, we have a chat on the phones um, the day before the shows just to go through which, which order we're going to do things in and that kind of thing. And I did kind of cut off quite quickly because we were taking the grandchildren to feed the ducks. I'm, I'm sorry, but grandchildren come before prep. So sorry, Hannah. Um, there were three ducks there. I put a picture on my Facebook page um, the other day of nine ducklings. And there was, there was quite a, there's quite a few ducks there normally, but yeah, I don't know what's happened to the ducklings, I don't know what happened to the mother, there were three male ducks there and that was it. So they had a lot of duck food. <laughs> um, I keep touching these, should we have a look at them? Is that what we're looking at? Um, oh, now we were going to do the early bird, weren't we? <coughs> See, this is what happens when you cut short your conversation to go feed in the ducks. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, Early bird, a reduced price while we have the stock, launching at eight o'clock in the morning. You get two of these, it only says one on the website, or there's only a picture of one on the website, but you do get the two. And they're little storage compartments, look, to keep things like, I've got thimbles in there, I've got some Clover Wonder Clips and bobbins and buttons. So for small items, the kind of thing, these, these actual items are in the bottom of my sewing box. Um, so the kind of things that you normally lose, so it could be um, beads or small buttons and sequins and, and things like that. Um, you can see them. It's just really handy. Easy to store as well. You know, they don't take up very much space, but it just means that you're not rummaging around the bottom of your drawers. And of course, it doesn't have to be just for sewing things. Um, if you are a jewellery maker, if you're a crafter, maybe you could put different colour um, glitters in there. And I don't, I'm not a paper crafter. I don't know what you do with them. Um, but they're just really useful. Nice size. You get the two. You can join them together. Like so, you can store them on the side if you wish. They don't all have individual lids, they become their neighbour's lids, if you like, to build up a couple of towers. Then you've got two lids just to go on the top there as well. So in your workroom, on your desk, maybe you're going to keep your earrings in there if you're, if you're making jewellery, it could be still your findings. I'm not a jewellery maker either, I hope I've got the words right. Um, another two for just £4.98. So you're saving £3 while we have the stock and we'll keep that price at that price until they actually sell out. So remember we've got your um, £3.95 postage all day as well. Let's have a look. A lemurs. You know, you, you read what, the title of the fabric before seeing it. And I read Lima and Flowers. And you know, really? But it's actually really pretty, isn't it? I, I think it's the colours, the delicate flowers. 
I love those colours. The you know the um, the pinks and the purples. They're they're very summery. They're very soft and very pretty. I'm thinking clothing again. You know that would make a lovely blouse or a shirt. Little girls dresses, home deck. It's a it's a wide fabric again. So yeah, it's that wide. I would say 150. So if you're um, if you're making homewares. You know, curtain, oh, pair of curtains would look really fresh, wouldn't it? Or cushion covers, table runners. Um, what are those covers that go over the arms of your chairs? I think it's really pretty for homewares and it's bright and fresh and uplifting and, and summery. And it's 100% cotton. <laughs> um, and then. We'll give you a reminder of the French Bulldogs. This is lovely. Again, you've got a wide fabric. Cotton again. Poplin, so dressmaking quality. Look at those little chirps. You just want to get in there and give them a scratch behind the ears, don't you? Again, it's £4.99. I love the colours on that. It's got like a soft cream in the background colour. Um, are you making something for your pets? I don't know if I'd use it for a dog bed. My, my dog would get it filthy. She's not the cleanest thing. <laughs> but it could be maybe um, a, a bag to put your, your bits and bobs in. Maybe you've got um, making a, a bum bag or something like that for when you go dog walking to keep your treats in, your poo bags. Nice weight of cotton as well. Right, something else that we haven't seen before is our mini pressing board. Look at that. that that's actually really handy. Um, it's got a non-slip base. It folds flat as well, so it's easy to store. But it's like a little dolly ironing board. Um, but if you have your, um, your mini irons, your little prim iron, um, and this at the side of your sewing table, it's just handy to press open small seams. So if you're a patchworker, and you're pressing your seams open or whichever side you press them to. You don't have to get the big ironing board out if you're, if you're short on space. Um, then this is just perfect to have at the side of your uh, machine. It's got a removable cover so you can wash it if you need to. And it's a heat reflective cover. So it bounces the light back from underneath the iron and makes the most of the heat from your iron. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a little sledge. Um, and remember, it just folds flat. And these... Um, stoppers on the end just stop it from slipping all over the place when it's on your table so just a useful handy little tool for only three pounds and 99 pence seven pounds and 99 pence sorry i was looking at the postage <laughs> that's, that's that is the kind of thing that my granddaughters would love with their barbies <laughs> but it's, just, it's a handy little tool it comes boxed as well so if you are giving it as a gift it's going to be easy to wrap so those occasions where you don't want to take out your big ironing board, you've only got a little bit of ironing to do, you've only got your little iron, then that's just a handy thing to have, no thanks. I've almost seen everything. What you do with hand cream on a sewing channel, I hear you say. Um, seams, hand creams have been designed specifically with the sewer in mind because the last thing that we want is to put grease all over our fabrics. So the oils and the hand creams absorb into the skin really quickly. So they do the job. I love the smell of these as well. It smells like a spa. And you get so much as well. So to keep your hands looking nice, and particularly at the moment, we're washing our hands more than ever before. We're going to get a, a lot of dry skin but this isn't just for hands, it's an oil that you can use on dry skin that you have anywhere. I'm not even squeezing the stopper there and I've got plenty. Um, so if you've got a bit of dry skin on your knees, on the top of your toes, on your heels, see how little you actually need to use. That was, that was how, without even, let's see if I can spread that around a bit. Um, that was without even squeezing the stopper and I've got enough for two hands there. And it smells, I just love the smell. I don't know what it is. Um, oh, it's got coconut, macadamia, seed oil, 
sunflower seed oil. I can't, I can't identify what the smell is, but if you've ever been to a spa, this is like a spa in a bottle. Now it's only £21.99, that is going to last you so long. So if you've got dry skin on, on your knees, on your elbows, you can use it wherever you like. So it doesn't, it just says hand and nail oil, but this is dry skin anywhere you like. And you can see how quickly that absorbs as well. I'm going to put rather a lot on that one. But it's not sticky, it doesn't actually feel oily. And you're getting so much, that's going to last such a long time. That's a nice gift for somebody, isn't it? Whether they say or whether they don't. And again, it's only £21.99. We've got the hand cream too. I love it. It smells the same. I love this one. Oh, I shan't open. Shall I open it? Yeah, let's open it. I was just looking to see where I put my handbag because I've got one in there. I'm sure I have, and I left it in the car because I only used it this morning. But any excuse to open another one? Oh. There we go, done it. Interesting telly, isn't it? So there's your hand cream. I'd, again, you really don't need very much of this, seriously. Um, if I... That's probably too much. It just goes an awful long way. But again, it doesn't... I'm going on that hand as well. Um, it sinks into the skin. I, I was asked, Karen actually, who's, who's the founder, um, asked me to trial it um, oh, a few months ago. Um, and it took me ages to get around to doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, because I just thought, I don't, I don't like to use hand cream when I'm working because the, the last thing I want is grease on my work. So I'll use it, you know, away from work, but no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Um, and then when she said it absorbs quickly into the skin, I thought, no, it doesn't. No, I can't imagine that happening at all. Um, but it, it does. And in fact, I gave her such a glowing testimonial. I was really surprised how quickly it sinks into the skin. The, so the smell, it smells like a spa, but it just leaves your skin feeling so soft. So I have two. I have one, let's so say it's either in my bag or in the car, because I used it this morning. And I keep one at the side of my PC, which is where I do my sewing. It's all in the same room. So give it a go. Smells lovely, but designed specifically for sewers, so it's non-greasy. <laughs> and that's only £13.99. I'd, I'd, I'd have a couple. Leave one where, where you wash your hands at home, so whether it's in the bathroom or whether it's um, by the side of the kitchen sink. I wear rubber gloves when you're washing up. Um, but I do like to keep one in my handbag because I do like to keep applying it throughout the day. So... Have we seen everything? No, we haven't, have we? Got some more fabrics for you. Let's have a look with the red stars. So this is a Rose and Hubble red stars. Cotton poplin. Homewares, clothing, 112 centimetres wide, 100% cotton. It's just fun, isn't it? Now this is a bundle. So there's red, yellow, and pink in the bundle. So you get one and a half meters for £10.99. That's good value. Oh, that'd make a nice bag lining, wouldn't it? If you've got quite a plain fabric on the outside, I like a nice lining. I like a nice lining in a, in a jacket. Because um, it's kind of unexpected. And nobody's going to see it unless you know, your jacket opens or you're taking it off. But I just think it's just nice to have something unusual. Um, so there's the red, there's the yellow, and we have the pink. And it's a really bright pink. Well, they're all really bright. They're lovely together. Um, reminds me of a circus somehow. The, the three together in a decor in a kid's bedroom, cushions maybe, I think would be lovely. So again, it's £10.99, a metre and a half all together there. And Rose and Hubble, so we like, like to bring your names. We like to name drop on Sewing Street. These are the pink, blue and silver. So if the bolds are a little bit too bold, we have the pastels for you here. Um, again, at £10.99, a metre and a half. And it's 112 wide. So children's clothing, home decor items, 
baby quilts would look lovely. It's a nice soft fabric as well. You can see it's not stiff. It's going to be really comfortable. And it's only 10 99 And then we've got some spots. They match. So, silver spots, black spots, blues in two shades as well. Nice quality. And again, you've got that sheen. You have the softness, 112 centimetres wide. So this is the blue and spotty fabric bundle. That I thought went really well with that as well. So we have the silver spots, that's Rose and Hubble. And the black and white spots, that's a Rose and Hubble. Then you've got two planes. So the pale blue and the royal. Two metres of fabric there for £14.96. It's great value, isn't it? I think those are like the core fabrics, just things that you may not have a particular project in mind. You just think, oh, yes, I'm going to build up a little stash. So I'll always have the fabric that I want there. There'll always be something that coordinates. I'll always have that plane to go with the pattern. I'll always have a lining fabric. And these are good basic colours as well. They go with so many other different colours too. So two metres again all together for £14.96. So again, if you'd like to order, have a look on our website on sewingstreet.com. You can order on the phone lines, I have a hundred double, a double a number at the bottom of your screen. Um, and remember, you can come through on Facebook and have a chat as well this morning. It would be lovely to hear from you. Um, I'm going to see you again in the next hour with something brand new. We're going to be looking at fabric slashing with clover. So I'll see you in about three minutes. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck.
Hello there, good morning and uh, welcome back to 7th Street. Um, my name is Debbie Shaw, I'm going to, have to be with you for the next couple of hours. Now in this show we've got something brand new, I'm just going to reach over and pick this up. We have something brand new for you and it's a tool and everything that you need fabric wise to make a fabric slashed cushion cover. This is so much fun to do and it's like a, it's a faux chenille. So well, I'll show you how to do it later on, but basically you've got three layers of fabric and a backing fabric and you literally rip through them. Now I've used this technique um, quite a lot before in the past. I love it. And I've made uh, reverse applique heart shaped cushions with it. I've made bags using it. I made a really lovely um, evening clutch bag. But the method of doing it with scissors is really, really time consuming. It's worth it, but it takes ages and you have to be really accurate. Um, so we have for you the right tool for the job. You always get the job done better when you've got the right tool. And Clover have developed um, a rotary slash cutter. It's not actually rotary. The blade doesn't spin around like a rotary cutter, but it looks a little bit like a rotary cutter. But I'll show you how that works in a bit. Um, so. You can slash in straight lines and you can slash in curved lines. I intend to do both uh, in this hour as well. If you've done it before, let me know. It's a lovely effect, isn't it? Um, the idea is you cut through the fabric and then you wash it and uh, it goes fluffy. Because you're cutting on a 45 degree angle, the fabric doesn't actually fray. It, it, it just goes fluffy. I didn't put this one in the wash. I actually used a wire brush on it. So you can be really quite aggressive. A little scrubbing brush that you do your nails with isn't going to do the job. You really need to be quite aggressive as you're, as you're brushing it. And it just goes all soft and fluffy. So I've actually got three layers of the peony fabric there. And it's just, it gives a really nice effect, doesn't it? But loads of fun to do too. So there's your cutter. I'll just take this out and show you. There are, actually, when you've got your instructions in here, it's actually inside. Um, like so. But if you have a look on YouTube, there are loads of videos. Clover have got some up there and some, some of the people um, to demonstrate how to do it. So here you have, it looks like a rotary cutter. Again, the blade doesn't actually spin round. So eventually where the blade goes through the fabric, that's going to blunt. So all you're going to do is loosen this slightly and click. And that turns the blade by round by an eighth. So you've got a fresh cut there. So that's going to last you quite a while. So this is the, um, the blade that's going to be on the cutter when you get it home. You can't actually touch um, the, the blade unless you try really, really hard. So it's quite safe. And this long bar at the bottom prevents you from cutting through all the way through the fabric because you need to leave the back of the fabric intact. Otherwise, you'll just have lots of strips of fluffy fabric. But it has the smaller attachment as well. And that one is for slashing around curves. So we'll have a look at that shortly as well. So again, it's £14.99. It's just something a little bit different. It's something if you're using finer fabrics, you could use that technique um, and for dressmaking, maybe it's something like a waistcoat. For home wares, cushion covers, it's just perfect. And again, bag making, as long as it's a woven fabric, don't use um, a stretch fabric. That's, that's not going to work or anything with elastane in. So any kind of cottons would be ideal. Could use thicker fabrics like a denim, um, but again, don't go for a denim that's got any kind of stretch to it because that's not going to work. So that's £14.99. That's brand new. Do you want to see it in action? Should we do it? Or do you want to have a look at the bundle first of all? Because if you want to make the cushion cover like this, you're going to need three of these and then you'll need some backing fabric as well. So we've got three of these and the backing fabric. So those are the panels. You could make these go a little bit further um, and use um, a plain fabric behind there. So if you imagine where the diagonal lines go across, you'd have maybe a pink flash coming through. You get completely different looks when you use coloured fabrics. But you're going to have the three of those. These are all um, exclusive to Sewing Street and they're printed on 100% cotton. So one, two, three of those. And one and a half metres of backing fabric as well. I shan't get it all out, but one and a half metres is a lot of fabric. So you've got plenty enough to make your cushion cover and plenty left over as well. That's whether you're doing an envelope back. I mean, there's no pattern rent, there's no instructions. It's entirely up to you. Um, if you're going to do an envelope back or a zip back or however you want to, maybe buttons on the back, that's up to you. But it's a really pretty design. You need two, don't you? 
You can't just have one huge cushion. I think two cushions would be amazing. But they are very big, as you saw. So all of those for £22.99? That's great value. Shall I show you what we do? Sometimes you think there's better things to do. Um, oh. I need my ruler. I need my fabrics. No, oh, there we go. I didn't see where I put them. I'm not starting from scratch because that will take ages. Because you've got to draw lines all over the place. So, start. put all, the, all three layers together for a start. You can just about see the black outline through the fabric. So they don't have to be 100% lined up perfectly, but as close as you can get and just layer those three together. Some of the panels have a wide border on them, so I've trimmed that back. And then I put the whole lot on top of a piece of backing fabric, which you're getting, and cut that to about an inch, an inch and a half bigger all the way around. And you'll see why in just a second. That makes it easier, because we don't want to cut through the backing fabric. We're only going to cut through the top fabric. And then start in the centre and draw a diagonal line all the way across. Has to be diagonal. Don't do it across this way. Because like I said, a, a, fabric, a fabric that's cut on the grain will fray like this. You'll have long bits all over it and it'll look really, really messy. So a fabric that's cut on the diagonal will go fluffy. It won't fray. So start in the centre and draw your diagonal line. I'm using a, a heat erasable pen, so any kind of erasable ink pen would be fine. And then you're going to measure half inch increments all the way across. Oh, that was Lynn. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm in a conversation. You've no idea where I'm talking to. Um, I, I did say that I'd made a, a chenille bag. I made a, it's all in greens and it was a clutch bag and I gave it away on Facebook. And uh, Lynn won it, and she's put it on the sewing on the sewing street page. Oh, has she? That's the one. That was a very if I say so myself. That was a very nice bag. That was on YouTube, wasn't it? I'm sure I did that on YouTube. So again, just keep drawing the lines. So every half inch, and then we're going to sew across them. This is why I've made most of it up already, because this takes a long time. So you can see I've started sewing that already. Now start sewing in the centre, just like if you're quilting. Start in the centre and then work out both ways, um, because then you're not going to get your fabric all buckling up or moving. So just using a straight stitch, you out the way, and 2.4 the length of the stitch, doesn't have to be a tiny one, and we're going to sew over all of those lines. I sew all in the same direction as well, so if the fabric doesn't move, it, always, it moves in the same way. Um, actually, the, um, the, the finished cushion my daughter did all of the lines for me and she says it was a great practice for sewing in a straight line because it's the one thing that she hasn't quite mastered yet. But if you do go a little bit wobbly, don't worry about it. You don't need to get your quick and pick out or anything like that. It doesn't matter with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. So. I, I quite enjoy it, to be honest. I, I find it quite therapeutic. It's... Um, it's one of those projects that you don't have to think too hard about. Mindless. We talk a lot about mindfulness, but this is mindless sewing. You need quite a large area, though. I did find um, the weight of the fabric pulls quite a lot, so make sure you've got support. Actually, I love the extension table that comes with the sewing machine we've got in the next hour. It's huge! You don't need a fancy sewing machine to make something like this. It's only using a straight stitch. So if you're a beginner sewer and you've only got a basic sewing machine or you've borrowed a machine or you've inherited a machine, machines do a straight stitch. 
and that's all you need. Almost there. One thing I did find with the, um, the heat erasable, particularly yesterday because it was so warm, um, it was disappearing as I'm touching it. Hmm. But I like the heat erasable because it's quick. Do a, a test if you are using heat erasable pens because they're not really designed for fabric and they can, they can bleach. But this is white, so it doesn't matter. And I'm going to scrub it all anyway. Right, just a few more. You can see the black line shifted a little bit around the edge, but again, that doesn't matter. You'll have the same effect. We'll have a play with a different effect as well later. With the curves, that's something I didn't have time to do, so that'll be fun. Right. Oh, CJ says, morning, doing a fab, fab job. Thank you very much, CJ. Loving the peony panels. And she hopes that her husband and her daughter's partner get well soon. Oh, send them my love. Yeah, thinking of them. Um, right, now, I'm going to use the slasher in just a second, but I'm going to snip first. You'll find it easier. So this isn't time consuming at all, but I'm just going to cut into each one of those just to get it going. I think if you start right on the edge with the blade, it can crumple up a little bit. So you might think, oh, that's an extra process, but it's worth it because it makes the whole thing quicker. And then we'll have fun with it. There you go. So this would be a nice project to get somebody who's learning how to sew interested. Um, I don't know about you, when I learned to sew, it would, well, my mum taught me, it was actually quite fun. I thought everybody could do it. Um, but when I started sewing lessons at school, oh, it was a chore. It, it wasn't enjoyable. It was, um, I suppose it depends what your teacher was like. I had, I've heard so many stories from people who said that they were actually put off sewing by teachers. Um, I'm, I'm going back in the day, not teachers now, obviously. Um, but they'd tear apart seams that weren't, accurate enough and but this is a fun way to get going in sewing get going in sewing okay then you can take your, your cutter make sure that's nice and tight you're going to slip it underneath the um the top fabric but not through the bottom one i said if i'm just going to cut all of those into strips i'd have a load of strips but that's going to go under there and just do that that is so much quicker than trying to do it all with scissors. And it's fun and you don't need to worry about the blade wobbling all over the place like you would do with a rotary cutter. The blade's concealed for a start. Um, but that bar at the bottom just means that it, it keeps, kind of keeps you straight. It's loads of fun. So the bar, because it's, I mean, you could do narrower strips than that as well. I think half an inch or a centimetre is perfect. Um, but that bar also prevents you from going through your stitches. So unlike with a, a pair of scissors, I mean, imagine that if you're doing it with scissors, you'd be... And I'm trying not to catch the, the, the bottom fabric. And that... By the time I get to the end of this strip, it's going to start my hands aching. I'd rather do that. But look at it, how it, it starts to do this straight away. I haven't brought my scrubbing brush with me. So I did use a wire brush. It says on the instructions to, um, to wash, which will give you a similar effect, but I didn't want to wait, I just wanted to get on with it. I'll get the iron out in a second and blast away those red lines. But isn't that effective already, isn't it? And it makes it really soft. I'm going to go all the way across this, so bear with me, because I'd kind of like to finish the actual cushion. Then I'll have the matching pair. 
They do take large cushion pads, but it could be, you could just make a wall hanging out of it. It doesn't have to be a cushion cover. There you go. <laughs> but it, it's a very safe way of doing this as well because of the, um, because of the blade, because you don't actually touch the blade. Now, if you do feel the blade starting to blunt a little bit, again, loosen the screw on the side and then this clicks. So, I'll oh, loosen that a bit more. So I'm on six at the moment. Oh, click, I'll go that way. I'll take it around to number one. It should be on. When you get it home, it'll be on the blank bit. So when you twist it clockwise, go to number one. When you feel it blunting, click to number two. There you go. And remember, you've got the other foot for the, the curved um, chenille, which we'll have a go at in just a second. <laughs> I didn't realise this was going to take too long, so do bear with me at home. Or off you pop and um, put the kettle on, place your order, check out your baskets. <laughs> Um, you don't use this for, oh, what have I done there? I didn't tighten that up properly. Um, you wouldn't use this for anything else apart from um, fabric slashing. So again, the blade doesn't twist around and you go. Uh, it's not a rotary cutter. It's purely designed to do this with, but it does make it so easy and accurate. So you know you're not going to go through the base fabric because that's the last thing that you want. But imagine this with, um, I was saying using a, a coloured fabric behind it. So instead of seeing the white when you part it, you're going to see a pink or a green. That would be stunning. And it's, it is really satisfying. <laughs> and knowing that, you know, it's, it's a safe way of doing it. It's very, it's very relaxing and it's very calming. And it's nice that you see the effect straight away. And anybody can do it. So I'm working this loose. I'm only halfway. Sorry about this. There you go. So if we weren't live, we could speed this up. If you're watching on YouTube, fast forward about 10 minutes. Right, I'll need to snip some more into those lines before we carry on. So I shall tell you what, because that's getting a little bit tedious to wash. I'll snip the rest of these and then we'll have a go at the, with the curved one. And then we'll come back and finish making the cushion cover. Otherwise, you're just going to be really bored. Okay. This is quite important though, you'll find it a lot easier. In fact, it's probably taken longer to snip these than it is to use the fabric slasher. Um, but you do get a purchase on the fabric quicker when you snip. There we go. Almost there. It took um, maybe about three hours in total to make it up. Um, drawing the lines and sewing the lines is the, the most time consuming thing. So I'll put that to one side for now. We'll be back in a second. I've already got the, the second blade on here and I thought we'd have a go with some of the Tilda fabric that we had in the previous show. So remember you get the curved and you get the straight. <clears throat> so when you get the the set home, it'll have the long on. Um, so that's the one that, that I was just using to go in straight lines. And then there is a little attachment that comes with it as well. You can see how that's, that just sits in the same place. So unscrew this, take that part off, pop that one on, and that one goes into, um, into uh, wavy lines. You can do it straight with it as well, but that's designed to go around wavy lines, because if you think about it, that's not going to go around waves, is it? And I think that's very clever of Clover to do that. 
So that's what you're getting in the pack. The instructions are all there as well. But if you do have a look on YouTube, you will see um, lots of videos and instructions. Clove have put one on there themselves as well. So I have a spotty and a red and a blue and a green. So I'm having the green as my backing fabric. And those are all layered on the top. And then I'm going to draw my wavy lines. Again, try and keep them on, on the diagonal. Can you see that? You'll see it when I sew it. And I'll try and keep those about half an inch apart. I'll sew it, that would probably be easier, wouldn't it? And a lot quicker. So you're going to sew through all of the layers. And if you're doing a big piece, start in the middle, like with the peonies, and then work your way out. And just follow the curves. I've not done this before. It took so long to make that cushion to have time to do curves as well, so I thought, I thought I'll experiment live on air. So I'm just twisting around the lines. That will do. We'll just do a few lines. I won't make a, make a project out of this at the moment and see how it looks. So that's about half an inch away. Oh, it's a lot easier to sew in straight lines. It's not a perfect half an inch away, but I'm sure we'll get an effect. You could use um, just two pieces of fabric as well, it doesn't have to be three. Yeah. But I think if you've got finer fabric, you could, you could even go for four. I think that would be a, like a really nice effect. I'm just going to sew three lines here and see how we get on. Hmm. Maybe if I've used a colour of thread that I could see would have been a bit better. OK, that will do for now. I'll see what that looks like. So again, let's snip into the end bits. So not through the green one at the bottom. I'm just cutting into those two. And then there's my little blade. Oh, go on in. And following in between the lines. Oh, this is going to look nice. <laughs> a little bit more time consuming and it could be a gentle wave but again the bar stops you going through your stitches and it stops you cutting into the base fabric I think that's going to look lovely Give it a good old rough up. Sorry, is that really noisy at home? So you don't have to do the whole piece of fabric. This could just be a panel, um, or you could do a little bit of reverse applique. You do a really small area. See what I mean about on the straight? That's how it frays. That's going to happen with a curved line, isn't it? The more you kind of scrub that out, I wouldn't normally use scissors on it, I just haven't got my scrubbing brush with me. <coughs> Excuse me. But you can really see those colours starting to come through in the background. I think that's quite effective. 
And imagine if that was all over the fabric. And you can really see all of the different layers coming through. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's nice to be, um, I'm going to say artistic, uh, uh, creative with your sewing. When I was saying about learning to sew previously, it was all about dressmaking then. Um, I didn't learn quilting until about 15 years ago. It's always been the dressmaking. And I would never have imagined when I learned how to sew that there was any kind of techniques like this that you could use. So it's nice to have something that's a little bit different. So I'll just cut through the rest of these and then we'll make it the cushion cover. Again, there isn't a pattern that comes with the whole kit. It's just the fabrics. So there's three pieces of the peony fabric and you've got one and a half metres of backing fabric as well. So you could use these for other projects if you wanted to, if you don't fancy fabric slashing. Um, you've just got three panels and a load of white fabric at a very affordable price. You could use two panels and then save one. Um, or you could do all three with different coloured back backgrounds. So white will probably give you the same kind of feel here. Pink, you'll just about see the pink coming through when you start to fluff your fabric up. Or greens would look nice. And then you, you could then make three cushion covers instead of one. <laughs> the, short, the short ones are really quick. But again, with scissors, when I've done this before, it just takes so long. And there is a risk that you're going to cut through the fabric at the bottom, which you don't want to do, because then you've got a hole in your work. Almost there. There we go. And remember, the blade does turn. It's not, a, it's not a rotary blade, so it's not like your rotary cutter. You click it round once. And then you can use a different bit of the blade. So that doesn't spin around at all when you're cutting. It's loads of fun. Love doing this. But woven fabrics, remember nothing with any kind of stretch in it. Because that's not going to fluff up like we want it to. One more, and that's done. So no need to put a guard or, um, on, the, on the blade because you don't actually see it, so not like with your rotary cutters. I'm just going to give this a blast with the iron to take away the red marks. That's fluffing up already, look. So again, I use um, a scrubbing brush. If you're a little bit nervous, then try a nail brush. Um, it recommends that you wash it. I haven't got the patience. I just wanted my cushion cover finished. Um, and just rough it up a bit. You'd be surprised how uh, aggressive you can be with it, to be honest. It's quite, quite satisfying. And it's not going to fray a lot because all of those cuts are on the diagonal. That will do. Lines have gone. Go there. <laughs> oh, and look, no greasy residue from my hand cream. It's not, it's, it's so effective, isn't it? We'll do for now. Let's make up the cover. Right. Normally we have a huge cutting mat right down here. So I'm going to cut just inside the black line. Put 
that's a rotary cutter ruler and that will give you an accurate square just in case your fabric has twisted a little bit as you've been sewing. So just inside the black lines, love that sound. Oh, just because I can. And then down on the finer side. So you can see you've got a really big cushion. Um, I will measure that for you in just a second so you know what size cushion pad to buy. That would help, wouldn't it? Twenty four inches. So that didn't look very straight to me. That's better. So there we go. Now then, there's lots of different ways that you can make the back. Um, I'm just going to do an envelope back because it's quick and it's easy. But if you wanted to put a zip in the backing, then of course you can do. You've got plenty of fabric to be able to do that. That isn't straight either, Devon. What are you doing? Um, with the Peony Fabric Bundle, a quarter of the stock sold out now. It's better. So, I need to cut. I'm going to have the, the opening straight across the middle or, or thereabouts. So, I'll need to cut one piece of fabric to the same width and then about two thirds of the length and then another two pieces of fabric to the width and then that length. Um, if you want, if you want a really posh cushion cover, then you could line it as well. I'm not sure if you've got enough fabric to line it as well. You might need to add some more for that. Um, if I'm gifting or I don't sell things that I've made, I give them away normally. Um, but I would put a lining in there because it gives you a really luxurious finish. So. We need a bigger table. I'm just going to cut off the selvage. So you don't need that. Bigger table, bigger studio. Somewhere to sit down while you're sewing. All these things have been promised. Yeah, canteen. Right, so I'm going to put this on top and just cut around it. Again, I'd normally use my, my rotary cutter. But I can't find the mat. Alright. So, we'll just line that up and cut. straight across the bottom. As long as the top's square, don't worry too much about the backing fabric being exact. Oh, thank you. I've got a mat. I can use my rotary cutter. So that's going to go under there. Oh, here we go. Seamless. Oh, oh. See, we rehearsed all of this. I spent days rehearsing these shows. It's a good job we've got an hour, isn't it? Right, so this is going to be easier. You'll need a big cutting mat for this. It is a big cushion. So, and I can trim that. Oh, that, was, that wasn't bad going for using scissors, was it? That's pretty straight. So, let's do that. I will need that to be a little bit longer. Because remember, I'm cutting two pieces for the back. Is that one? I'm making such a mess on the floor again, then. 
the, the other presenters love coming in after me. There we go. Right, so I'm just cutting this a bit longer because remember I need two pieces to overlap at the back. And then we'll cut across here. You can see how accurate I'm being with this. And I'll put all of that on the floor because I don't actually need that fabric. So I'll just put that on the floor at the front. And then let's chop that in half. Okay, so I'm going to hem the edge of this by turning it over twice and top stitching. Just one side on both pieces. And then so one and two and stitch. The foot pedal migrates with the machine. That's why we'd like to sit down when we're sewing. We keep requesting. When we get our fancy new studio with our huge sewing area and tables to sit at and places to um, hang quilts and a conservatory. I, don't, I think we're just going to end up with a broom cupboard somewhere like we're in now. Okay, so I'm just doing that roughly, fold over twice um, by about half an inch and so all the way across. This is a way of making a cushion cover that doesn't use too much fabric. If you're going to do a line cushion cover, you're going to use quite a bit, but it is worth it because they do look so nice. Um, and actually a zip down the centre wouldn't take up too much fabric either. So fold over twice. So remember in the next hour, we've got um, a brand new sewing machine launch for you, which I'm really looking forward to showing you. Um, it's a pity there's only an hour to talk about it because there's so many features on it. Then I'm going to be with you tomorrow with some new sewing machine panels. So many of you bought the previous ones that I made, so we brought them back again. There's a sewing machine dust cover and um, a drawstring bag, but they're in new colorways. So again, fold it for twice. So that's that. And then these will go right sides together. So one that way with the seam side facing up. So one there. Again, don't matter, it doesn't matter if the lining's a little bit bigger, it's going to be trimmed down later. And one there. So this fabric is about two thirds of the way along the panel. And they're facing in opposite directions. So we'll have a few pins in there, I think. Oh, come on. Particularly where these overlap. And then we'll sew all the way around the edge. And I like to back tack um, at these points as well, because when you put your cushion inside, those are the points that are going to have some stress on them. So back tacking is just reversing backwards and forwards a few times, if you want to wear. There. So I'm going to sew from the pattern side because I know that my um, cushion top is square, it's squarer than the lining. And literally sew all the way around. I'm just using the edge of the foot as seam allowance, it doesn't have to be exact. 
And so it's just over a quarter of an inch. You can see how my lines weren't too straight today, so aren't So into the corner and stop with the needle in the down position. around and I'm coming up to the join so again just backwards and forwards just to make that nice and strong Into the corner again, stop with the needle in the down. A twiddle around and carry on. It is like my daughter's right, this is a very good exercise for sewing in a straight line, this one. And again, it does help if you've got a table at the side of you or an extension table on your sewing machine just to help keep the, um, the weight of the fabric. Um, if you've got a lot of weight of fabric, whether you're curtain making, quilting, dress making or whatever, it can pull your stitches. And it could be one of those reasons why you end up with a wavy line of stitching. It's just because it's pulling away from the needle. So a little bit of support here always goes down well. Oh, with the fabric bundle, by the way, with the details on your screen, the pin is half the stock sold out now. Um, there's the three panels and one and a half metre of fabric as well, of backing fabric, which is an awful lot of fabric. Right, that's that. So let's take out our pins. And those. I'll just snip that off there. Snip across the corners, and that cuts down on the the bulk in the corners. Oops. And then we can turn the whole thing the right side out. Put the corners out there. Break that through. Uh, and that fabric's going to go a long way um, and I, I've used all of it, all three of those um, fabric panels together but you could get away with just using two. Maybe add another piece of white fabric behind those as, as, there, as well. There you go. So that's all ready to have my cushion going in there. It needs a bit more scrubbing, I'd like it a bit, a bit more fluffy. So this one which is the one I made at home, you can see, well, you can see the difference there. This one's a lot softer and it's a lot fluffy, but I did use a wire brush on that. I did give it a, a good old scrub. So then you need a 24 inch square cushion pad, which is huge. And you've got a big comfy cushion. Imagine a couple of those on your sofa. And they're going to brighten it up. They're massive. So that's the one that I've just made bef before scrubbage. And then that's the one that I've already scrubbed. And that's just so much softer, so it's worth spending a bit of time just ruffling that up. It's not going to fray too much because it's good on the diagonal. Remember, your fabric won't fray on, fray on the diagonal. Um, it just goes fluffy. But it's so soft. And it's so much fun to do. But having the right tools for the job really does make a difference. And that, um, that slashing tool just made this an absolute breeze. With the little clutch bag that Lynn put a picture of on the Facebook page, um, that, that took a while to do with a pair of scissors. This would take so long. So I wish I'd have had the tool beforehand. But it's, it's a really lovely effect, isn't it? So again, with your bundle, I have kind of put into the fabric a little. You'll have one and a half metres of white fabric and three of those all for £22.99 
You're getting so much for £22.99. And again, I, know, I keep saying it, I do like to stretch my money. I like my value for money. Um, so you could... Um, actually make three of these if you used a different colour behind. So whereas I've used three of these all together, if you used a plain white, you'd have a similar kind of look, but you could actually stretch this out to three cushion covers. There's one and a half metres of white fabric for backing fabric included as well. You would need some more um, because one piece of that fabric is behind the, um, the slashed bit and then there was all the rest of it on the back. So... That, 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 that's... You would probably have a strip of fabric about that wide left over. So not enough to make three cushion covers. You'd need to get some extra. Um, if you have a look for peonies on the website, or you can search the code, which is ZFX606. Or we've got a free customer call line if you'd like to order on 0800 001 Um UK base, so you can have a chat with them if you like. It's not going to cost you anything. And you can place your order that way. But £22.99 for all of those. And the tool that I was using, if you're going to do fabric slashing, you need the tool. It's, it just made it so much quicker. That would have taken me hours to do um, with a pair of scissors. And there's always a chance that you're going to cut through fabric that you don't want to cut through. So this is it. It looks like a rotary cutter, but the blade doesn't spin. So as the blade does blunt, and it will do eventually, just loosen this slightly at the back and then you can click it round. So you've got eight points in effect that you can use to cut with. Um, it comes with a smaller attachment as well. So the long one is for long straight lines. That's what it is for the cushion cover. And the small one is for going around curves. And these bars at the bottom prevent you from cutting through your base fabric and going through the, the lines either side. So you're not going to wobble. Um, you imagine when you're cutting through the strips of fabric, you can only go that far. So you, you're not going to get a wobble. And it's safe. You, you can touch the blade. But you have to try really hard to get to it. So it doesn't have a blade cover or anything. Um, all of your instructions are in there as well. Oh, a quarter of the stock of this one sold out. Brand new for you today as well. So those are all of your instructions. But I'd suggest you have a look on YouTube because there's some very clear demonstrations on there. Some of those from Clover as well. So this will tell you. It's in different languages as well. So it is. There's very little. Um, so one page. <laughs> um, but it'll tell you how to change the blade. You can get replacement blades. We don't have any in stock at the moment. How to do your curve slash cutting. Um, and just how the whole thing works, how to turn the blade um, when it starts to blunt as well. All for £14.99. I'm so pleased that you've been loving that one. It's, it's loads of fun, honestly, you're going to really enjoy doing that. I've, I've really enjoyed it. So, you can go there. I used um, Tilda um, Fat Quarters when I did the curved one. I'll finish that actually, I'm going to take it home and finish it. Which of these? I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I think that would make a nice bag. So that was using the curved blade and just um, four of the Tilda fabrics. But the red really stands out, doesn't it? The nice thing is you get a different look every time you try it. Nobody, no two people will make the same project exactly the same. So ten fat quarters there for £31.99, which makes each one of those about £3.20, which for a Tilda fat quarter is such good value for money. So that goes, that goes in that way. I was just trying to be tidy. That's not going to happen. Um, £31.99, 10 pieces, very simple designs, little ditzy spots and stripes, and then you've got the planes to match with each one of those. So there's the blue, you have the pinks, there's the lemons and the teals and the greens. That would make a really lovely rainbow quilt, wouldn't it? But you've got quality of fabric with it being a tilda, of course. It's nice and soft. It's easy to work with. Um, the colours are, are just beautiful. They're soft. Um, no matter what you're making with those, it doesn't have to be for quilting. It could be um, making tilda dolls clothes. You know, there's, it, it's just the small print, I think, just lends itself to smaller items. So I think that's a, that's a great deal. Uh, I want to give a reminder of the quilt labels that we launched in the last hour. These are they. So this is the pink. This is a lovely way of adding that personal touch to your quilt or whatever project it is you're making. Could be a bag. 
um, could be any kind of homewares, but to label it so that so people know um, who made it. So things like quilts particularly that are handed down for generation to generation. It's quite nice to have that signature on the back so that everybody in the future will know who made that quilt and maybe who made it for. So you've got different sizes there, the round and the square. You've got some that look like ribbons. You've got little sewing machines on the bottom. Some have got messages on and sentiments. Some are plain. So cut them out, sew them on, and everyone will know how proud you are of that quilt that you spent so long making. And again, it's just £7.99. But all of those. We've got two colours. They're quite similar. That's the pinks. There's, there's a, the grey ones in the pinks as well. Um, <clears throat> or you can go for the blues. But you've still got greys in there too. So handmade with love. You've got stitched handmade. Uh, made with love on the sewing machines. Handmade with love. And then we've got the larger ones there too. All the little hearts in the background. I'll just pan across again, just so you can see all of them. Mm, there we go. Oh, June sent a message. She's asking about the fabric slasher. Can you do circles or heart shapes with the tool? Yes, you certainly can. And um, that would that would be a lovely effect, actually. Just like. The concentric, what's the, what's the word? Circles inside circles and hearts inside hearts. That would be lovely. I did make um, a heart bag. I think that might be on YouTube as well. Um, I made a tote bag, but I, I slashed some fabric diagonally like I did with the cushion cover um, and then cut out a heart shape and put the fabric behind it. So I did a, re a reverse applique. And that was, that was quite a nice one as well. Remember when you're going around circles or when you're going around the curves in at the top of a heart, there will be an area there that's on the grain. And remember, when you're cutting on the diagonal, it goes fluffy, but the bits that are on the grain will fray a little bit. So you might need to trim those off. You know, if you, if you really go mad and scrub at it, some of the straight grain pieces will, will fray. But that's OK. That's all part of the look. So just give you a reminder there of what that looks like. It's over the tactile. And as it fluffs up, it just goes really, really soft as well. I wouldn't do too small circles and hearts. Um, I'd keep them quite big, maybe keep the centre quite plain. But yeah, I, I can't wait to see what you've been making with them. I hope you're going to put lots of pictures on Facebook. Um, but do go for the tool. So you, you can make these things without, but it's just so much easier and so much quicker with. I wouldn't like to have sat there with a pair of scissors and cut through all of this. It would have taken ages and really hurt my wrists. <laughs> right, that has gone back in. There. Now, if you're new to Sewing Street, every morning we have an early bird. We're here live from 8 o'clock in the morning. And if you're there at 8 o'clock, we bring you a special deal. So today's special deal is 10 little storage compartments that all screwed together. Um, we'll keep the price low. You're saving £3 on these as long as we have the stock. So we bring you these really early. Sometimes early birds sell out in 10 or 15 minutes. Sometimes they'll last for days, uh, depending on how much stock we have. Um, but these at £4.98 are such a great deal. So they're all individual like these. The thing that I like about them is storing little bits and bobs. All of these bits and bobs are in the bottom of my sewing box. So I didn't even know that I'd got those little curtain rings in there. I just, oh, I didn't know they were there. Um, but those are the kind of things that if you keep them organised will save you money because you don't go out and buy twice. But useful storage, not just for your sewing bits and bobs. Maybe you are a jewellery maker and you can keep your findings in there. It could be for beads, they could be for sequins, they could be for buttons, bobbins, ribbons. Um, ten in total. They're screwed together as well so you can make a big long tower. And I love the way that these are clear and you can see inside them. I've even got my thimbles in there, look. Or two. I've actually I could fill these with thimbles. I love thimbles. Um, Different coloured buttons, if you want to keep you organised in, in colour options, would be a nice one. What about things like um, Prestards, hooks and eyes, things that when you open the packet, they just fall all over the place and you, you don't know where they are. They're all in the bottom of my sewing box. <laughs> Um, keeping you organised and at affordable prices, so that's your early bird project. You do you get the two? Um, the picture on the website only shows one, but we are going to give you two for just £4.98. pence. Right, we have coming up in the next hour a brand new sewing machine that I think you're going to fall in love with. 
Um, it's um, no, it's, it's amazing. There's an awful lot to talk about with this machine. It's a 780 plus, uh, and it's something that's exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. So we're going to take a break for about um, five minutes or so. We'll get the machine out, and then I'm really looking forward to, to showing it to you. So we'll see you again in about five. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street, and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So, number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket.
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it, and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, welcome back. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. We have a brand new sewing machine to show you, which I know it's been on the website for a while now, well, for a few days now, and I know it's been selling already. I think you're going to be absolutely over the moon. Uh, this is the Elna 780 Plus. 350 stitches, lots of feet included. It's a really lovely sewing machine to use. And it's one of those, I, I, I've had it at home for a few days and there's still things I haven't explored on this sewing machine. There are so many features to it. I'll take through as many as I can in the show. Um, but first of all, let's take a look at what you actually get. Full instructions, really easy and clear to follow. Um, there's the machine itself. I'll warn you, it's heavy. I can't lift it, which is which is fantastic because you get a really good solid machine. It's going to cope with heavier weights of fabric, um, and it is actually a very simple machine to use as well. I'll take, I'll, I'll give you a tour of that in just a second. But look at it! It looks beautiful. There is a huge extension table, and. Um, a seam guide. I'll show you how that works later. That is very, very useful, for, particularly for beginners. So let me put this down here out of the way and I'll show you what's in the box. Um, it does come with a cover. So right out of the way. So you've got a nice hard cover there as well with pockets in it, which is really useful. And then you will find an accessory box. So this has got tipped up with so many things in here, so many different feet. For so many different sewing projects. It's got a stylus, I'm going to need that when I point out all of the different stitches. And then here we have a walking foot. Now this is another one of those machines that Elna bring you that have a special high performance plate. As you can see, I haven't even had a chance to use this one yet. Um, but a high performance plate for straight stitching only um, will really help you um, perfect your stitches. They're going to stay flat. The fine fabric isn't going to disappear inside the machine. Um, it comes with its own um, high performance foot as well. So you can see you've only got one hole in the center there. So purely for straight stitching. But it also comes with a high performance walking foot. So you have your regular walking foot um, and the, the foot on the bottom of this does uh, snap off. So going forward, if you wanted to order more parts, then you can snap on new ones there without ordering the whole thing. But that is your high performance walking foot. That's the first machine I've seen that has the high performance foot. We've got two um, free motion feet or darning feet. One has a closed toe and one has an open toe. That's entirely your personal preference, which one you'd like to use. And then we also have 
your free motion feet. Now these are a very different way um, that I've certainly been used to from free motion embroidery. With these kind of feet, um, the bar goes over the needle clamp, um, the needle clamp, sorry, and they bounce up and down, they hop across your fabric. But with these feet, again, you've got your open toe, you've got a zigzag uh, foot, and then you've got the one that has the quarter of an inch markings on there, which is great for echo quilting. And um, these glide across your fabric, so you don't need to unscrew the ankle to fit these. They clip on very much in the same way that your buttonhole, your button placement foot clips on. And there are three of those included as well. Sorry, you've got four of those included as well. You do have a button placement foot. You have your open toe satin stitch foot, your closed toe satin stitch foot. You've got a free motion foot for ruler work. So if you like to quilt using rulers and templates, you don't have to worry about buying. Is it an, a low shank? Is it a high shank? Is it a medium shank? You're getting the right foot included for ruler work there as well. Uh, rolled hem foot, over edge foot. We have a quarter of an inch foot but then another quarter of an inch foot that has a guide on the side. And, and I like that if I'm, if I'm edge stitching, so maybe if I'm top stitching around the flap of a bag or something like that, then I'll use the guide to help me, give me that quarter of an inch seam. If I'm patchworking, then I'll use the one with the guide along the seam. But if I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance on, I don't know if I'm dressmaking or something like that that requires a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I don't want the guide. So you've got both of those. So you, you've got the right tools for the job again. And then, the rest of this is just filled with needles and screwdrivers and quick unpick and spare bobbins, um, as you would expect to find. Oh, you've got your zipper foot in there as well, you expect one of those, and you have your buttonhole foot as well. So that's everything that's included, and you're getting a two year warranty with this machine as well. And, oh, just to mention as well, um, Jane from Elna has very kindly offered to make a video for us, so she's coming over um, tomorrow to film a video with all of the features, so we'll be uploading that to the channel as well, or to a YouTube channel. You do have um, a DVD that comes with the machine, and that will basically tell you how to set it up, all the way from plugging it in to how to thread it and then choosing stitches and things like that. You will also have another CD-ROM, with some software on it that will allow you to design your own stitches. So I haven't had a chance to do that as yet. I've, I've loaded all the software onto my PC and it looks quite easy. Um, when I was chatting to Jane the other day, I said, oh, I, I did that years ago. It was a brother sewing machine. I must be going back about seven or eight years. And it came with graph paper. And you had to mark out on the graph paper where you wanted the stitch to go and then program all of that into the uh, the touch screen. On, I mean, it was brilliant. I, I came up with some lovely stitches, but now things have advanced so much. So you can do all of that on your screen. So when you bring up the software, it looks like a piece of graph paper. Then you can mark out where you want your stitches to be, how big you want them to be. You can test them as well, then put them on a USB stick and the machine's got a USB port in the side of it. So you can just transfer your stitches onto the machine. You do have to format your USB stick. The, the machine will tell you how to do that. Um, use one with a, a low memory, not, not with very much storage on there. And with nothing on it because the machine will wipe off anything that's on there when it's, when it's loading on here. But that's something that you can have a play with as well. But let me show you around the machine. Because this is really exciting. Um, there are lots of ways that you can personalise this as well. Um, so you can change the colour of the screen. You can change the, your favourite stitches. You can save them. You can monogram. You can join the stitches together. There's, there's so much you can do with the machine. Oh, and, and I shall only do this once. It also comes with a huge foot pedal, which is brilliant because you're not going to slip off it. And there's this metal plate that comes with the machine as well that holds a little Diddy foot pedal next to it. And this is a thread cutter. So you do have a thread cutter on the machine, but this is a separate thread cutter. You might find it easier to do that. You can even put this on the left or the right hand side. They really do think of everything. So if you find it easier to press your foot on the pedal instead of pressing a button on the machine, then that's what that one's for. I shall show you quickly the extension table because our table isn't quite big enough for it. When we get our new studio. So this accessory compartment comes off, so that just slides out of the way. And there are two compartments. You've got one at the front and one at the back, so there's lots more storage inside here as well. And these come out so you can store bobbins and things like that too. So that's your accessory compartment. And then the table 
You'll have to put the legs on when you get it home, but they are detachable. That slides on here, over there like that. And then there's a little gap at the back here, and that's where your seam guide sits. So that simply slips in here. Whoops. You can adjust the height of the legs as well. And then this slides along, so you can have this wherever you want, and then your fabric goes up against here. So you're always going to be sewing in a straight line. I know you've got marks on the throat plate, but this one is right over here. So you can use any of this area with the, with the seam guide as well. That's a great idea. But I do need to take that off because um, our table's not big enough for it. But I do like this. I like the, the size of that, it's, it's huge. I'll put you down there, right. So I'll take the knee lift out for now. There's another feature with that that I'll show you later on as well. But I wanted to show you the, the stitches inside here. So 350 of those in total, and you have a memory on the machine as well. All of this in the instructions, so don't worry too much about listening too closely to me. Um, but these, these are sectioned. So we have utility, these are all of your different types of buttonholes and eyelets. These are all applique stitches. So normally on a sewing machine, these are, they'll be like A, B, C or one, two, three. Um, but you know, utility stitches, the ones that you're going to use most of all. Um, your over edge stitches, over edge for thick fabric, um, pin tucking, blind hemming stitches. The buttonholes, um, lots of different styles of buttonholes, button placement stitch, um, your darning stitches there. We've got buttonholes for stretch fabric that you can use for decorative purposes. You've even got different shapes of eyelets. And you've got a tacking stitch. Tacking stitch, um, that goes on the bottom of a V-shape or the top of a pocket or something like that. Um, that's an American terminology. They, they call, what we call tacking, they call basting. And that is a tacking stitch. We normally call it a bar tack. Over here, you've got all of your applique stitches. So if you're not sure which stitch is going to work best for applique, try all of these out. They're, they've all been sectioned all together like that. So you know that they're the best stitches for applique, those are what are recommended. These are heirloom stitches, so you can do drawn work, you can do smocking with these, um, decorative stitches there, um, cross stitch type of stitches. These are recommended for quilting, so again you've got your quarter of an inch setting, um, lots of different decorative stitches here that you can use for stitching in the ditch, um, for joining fabrics together. Um, these that are greyed out, by the way, you can um, mirror image them and you can mirror image in four directions with this machine too. These are all of your satin stitches, bridge stitches, so those are all of your straight stitches and straight stretch stitches. You have your professional grade needle plate, which is used with the professional grade uh, feet, as I showed you earlier on. You've also got a regular straight stitch plate. We have the alphabet in two fonts, upper and lower case, sorry, four fonts, upper and lower case, and we've got, I think one of those is Japanese. Um, these are words, so these are all sewing type of stitches, they've called that play. Pictograph is your decorative stitches, and I've not seen stitches like this before. Um, do not tumble dry, do not iron, or you can iron, and your washing instructions as well, so that's quite nice. You could stitch those out on your, um, on your quilt labels from the previous show. And these again, all decorative stitches. Um, these are long decorative stitches. I'll show you some of those in a bit. And all of these, again, just decorative stitches. Lots and lots and lots of them. So again, 350 stitches in total. There's so much potential with the sewing machine, no matter what it is that you're, you're going to be sewing. So if you're, if you're upgrading, um, what an amazing machine you're going to be upgrading to. There's, there's just so much going on with this. On you go. Now we do have, I'll give you a tour around the front here as well. And in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is going to, is going to cut the thread with my thread cutter. I'm glad I got that out of the way. Um, let's go into settings. This is very intuitive, it's very informative and it's very simple to use. Do take a look at the instruction book. Do take a look at the, uh, the videos online as well because they really will help you. Um, so this is what happens when you first switch the machine on. As with all computer sewing machines, it will default to a straight stitch. Um, and these are utility stitches. 
So you can see at the top here, I've got one of two, there are two pages. If I go to the bottom here, I can go on to the next page. Um, so let's go back again. Let's go into the second section here. And these are the different chapters that I took you through at the top. So all of the applique stitches, they're all here. I've got two pages so I can scroll through to the next one. I get a picture of what the stitch is going to look like. Um, the recommended foot to be used with said stitch. If I open this up, I can change the length, I can change the width, I can adjust the tension and I can adjust the presser foot pressure all on this dial here and I can save those. So for instance, if I wanted to increase the width, if I wanted to decrease the length, then you do all of that here. And then to default, back again, you press DFT here and it goes back to the recommended settings. So put that down again. The next chapter here are stitches that you can taper. And I'll show you that later on as well. But basically, you can curve the end of each one of those stitches to any angle that you want to. So I've got five pages of stitches that I can taper. So let's take a look at this one, number eight. And then I can open this up. And I've got the different uh, kind of settings and the angles that you can taper it at. It's worth just having a play with this and um, see what happens. Oh, there we go. So if I wanted to make that maybe a 45 degree angle, that's the start of the stitching, I can make that 45 degrees. That's the end of my stitching, I can make that 45 degrees and then press OK. Then it remembers it and I'm ready to go. Well, let's move on to the next one here. So these are the four different alphabets that you have. Back again, we've got the script, which is rather elegant. Back again, Broadway, and then the block. And then finally here with the little t-shirt, here are more sections. So this is, um, again, kind of a section all the stitches together that are relevant. So if you're sewing a seam, what are you sewing? Are you sewing woven? Are you sewing stretch or knit fabric? Are you top stitching? Uh, I must do a stretch fabric. So these are the stitches that are recommended for a stretch fabric. So instead of having to go back into um, my um, manual to see what it recommends, shell stitch, um, are you doing a blind hem? Are you doing a shell tuck? Those are the stitches that it recommends. And that's a lot easier than going into your manual whoops, and trying to find the right chapter or the right page. It's like having the manual right on board here, right in front of you. Now at the side here, Let's go back to that. We've got settings. Oh, you can save any of your projects. I'll start at the top, do it properly. Um, so I've already got one in here, which just says Debbie, because I was just playing with it. So you can store all of your different settings. I think it's up to three megabytes, I can't remember offhand. Um, if, you, um, if you've got too much to store on here, you can actually store this in, um, in a USB. So, you can, you know, then, then you can come back and you've got all these stitches there. You don't have to worry that you've overfilled your machine. Now in the settings, this is quite nice. Because you don't have to have that beeping. You can turn that all the way down to off. Um, we've got the screen contrast so we can go brighter and we can go darker. That might be easier for you. Uh, if we go on to the next page. Touchscreen collaboration. Oh, this is formatting. So if you're using a USB stick, then format the USB stick first. You've got a timer to put it onto standby. Uh, we've got a sewing light on, we've got the quiet mode on. This is what I was interested in, the background colour. So you can change the colour of the screen. I don't know if you can see that properly on your screens at home, but I've gone pink now. Or I can go yellow. So I'll leave that on yellow. When I was talking to um, Hannah, our producer, I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning, um, she was saying that she, she finds it a lot easier to read type on different coloured backgrounds. So black on white isn't the easiest thing for a lot of people to see. So maybe yellow means that these stand out even more. I've never seen that on the same machine before. Um, so I'm gonna press okay there, we'll save that one. So now everything behind there is yellow. So let's see what else we have in here. So inches or millimetres, whatever you prefer. It'll switch off after a certain amount of time. Now here, um, there's an automatic tension 
the remaining bobbin thread, you can choose when the machine's going to alert you. Um, so I've got it set at half a metre. When there's half a metre left on here, um, that's when it's going to tell me that the bobbin's about to run out. Do you want the needle to stop in the up or the down position? You can choose how that, how that defaults. Um, adjustable startup speed. Now, I like my machine to start quickly because I'm used to sewing and I, just, I like the speed of a machine, um, whether it's a start, stop button or the foot pedal. Most of you are going to use the middle one. If you want to have a slow start, then you just click that one. Let's move on to the next page. Uh, the foot height for pivoting. So you've got an automatic foot lift on the machine. It will automatically raise if you want it to, um, but you can choose the height that it raises to. Um, I mean, when you first get this home, if it, if it all looks a little bit um, overwhelming because there is so much, then don't do anything with this. Oh, and you've got different languages to choose there as well. So just use the machine as it is and delve into all of the settings um, at a later date. And let's take a look at some of those stitches though. And because I think it's about time we sewed something on this machine. So, do you know what I love as well? This is going to sound really silly, but listen to this when it starts up. I just love it. It just sounds so, I don't know, just, just love it. So the foot's automatically up. You can use the foot pedal, you don't need to. You've got your start stop button on the front hand. There's a speed control there as well. You can choose whether you want the foot in the up or the down position and the needle in the up or down position. And you've got a lock stitch on there as well. And you've got your scissor snips. But remember, I've got another foot pedal that I can do that with too. So let's, it's very tempting to just want to put the foot down because that's what I'm used to do with most sewing machines. Oh, I'll tell you what else it's done as well. It's just come up on the screen, resume last pattern. So if you switch the machine off and then you come back and say, oh no, I'd, I'd put that stitch in and I can't remember which one it was and I put all the right settings and it was all the right length and now I've switched the machine off. Most machines will default back to a straight stitch when you switch them on. This machine will say, do you want to resume the last stitch? So it hasn't forgotten what you were sewing. So I'm going to say no, I don't want to remember that. And then I can go on and choose many stitches. But it's, it's a very polite machine, I think, for asking you if, you, uh, if you'd remember. Do you remember you were sewing something? Do you want to go back to it? I think that's very intuitive. Um, let's go for a decorative stitch. So I'm going to go into that one and then into the, into the pictograph. So you've got all of the stitches on, front, on the front here, but then let me just show you what I was doing there. So into the second one along, this is utility stitches, and then we're going to go into the decorative stitches. And then I want the pictorial. So I'm here. Now you can still have a play with these stitches as they are. So I can change the width. I've never seen this on a machine before. I can change that way. It was like, where's the elephant? That, that was, this was just so funny when I was playing with it. Look, it's, it's bending down. And then it's going to go all short and squat. So you can... <laughs> But if you, maybe if you're sewing a narrow hem or you're top stitching, you only want a quarter of an inch there, you can go down. You've got all the sizes on here as well, remember, to whatever size you want. And then while you're here as well, because the elephant is one of those um, images that's greyed out, I can turn it around that way, but I can turn it around that way as well. So I can have him facing any way that I like. While you're looking at that page, you can also put these into a memory. So I can put my elephant in there. If you want to mirror image anything, um, do that before you put the next one in. So if I wanted to mirror image the elephant, for instance, do that before the stitch goes in. And then you can just keep adding and look at the sheep. But we weren't going to do that, so we'll bin that. I was just going to show you one of the simple stitches to start with. So, elephant. Oh no, I'm in the memory still, sorry. Go back to where I was. Where was I? That one, come on. Oh, look what I've done. Um, where's my elephant gone? There he is. 
Right, and then we can start to sew. So I'm not going to alter anything. I'm just going to put my foot on the foot pedal. The foot goes down all by itself. And then we start to sew. Although there's, there's an awful lot to this machine, there is, there is no way in an hour, I mean, we're 25 minutes in and I've only just started sewing, there's no way in an hour I can show you all of these features and benefits. But remember, Jane from Eleanor is going to um, make a video with us and she'll show you the key features and the key benefits. So by the time you get this home, you should have extra, extra footage there to have a look at. So let's stop there. And cut. Oh, look. Oh, I've got half an elephant. If I'd have pressed the lock stitch, then it would have... I should show you. So let's carry on sewing the elephant. Oh, no, I've cut it again. Wrong foot pedal. Away we go. So when you get to the edge of your seam where you want to stop sewing, if you press the lock stitch button, it'll stop. So I haven't taken my foot off the foot pedal. It's done a quick lock stitch and it's cut my thread. Oh, that was something that I programmed into it. I forgot to tell you. Um, if you, th there is a section on the settings page whereby whenever you use the lock stitch, you can have that followed by the snip stitch by the scissors. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but that's just another option. It makes it such a personal experience with the machine. You, you really do tailor make it to, uh, you know, what, what you want from the machine. But it's so easy to use. Let me show you that tapering thing. Oh, yeah, because I really want to show you that because I, I was really impressed. So if we go back again, <laughs> it, it is an issue when you've only got two people in the studio. And I have to say a big thank you to Joe. Are you going to just say hello? No. Oh. Hello. <laughs> He's waving and saying hello. There's myself and Joe in the studio. Normally, in, uh, under normal circumstances, we would have a floor manager, we would have a producer, we'd have a director. Um, there would be other people in the studio setting up for more shows coming up, and it would be a really buzzing kind of atmosphere. But because we're all being very um, safety conscious at the moment, as everybody should be, there's only two people in the studio, which means we don't have a camera operator and a director. Well, we do, but it's the same person. So Joe is over here directing is operating a camera over here as well, which is, and he's doing a darn good job. So tapering, are we over here? <laughs> so every time you see a different part of the machine is because Joe's come out, run around the back of the camera, reset the camera, pointed it at the right bit, run back around that, and I'll, then I'll say, let's have a look at this. And out he comes, he comes around right there. That's what we're doing. Okay, so this is the taper button. If I go into, it was very effective with this stitch, um, and I want to put a 45 degree, not a 60 degree, because I want to mitre the corners. So that's my start, 45, and that's my end at 45. And then I'm going to press OK. And then we're going to sew a box. Let me just check I've done that the right way. 45, no, so far, I want it 45 that way, 45 that way, and then okay. That's what I wanted. And then let's start to sew. So it's made me a 45 degree at the one side, and then I'm going to stop now then. Oh, how did I do that? There. Press the... So there's so much information on this machine. Um, let's stop there. And I can see I've got the line there with a 45 degree angle. So now if I start sewing my next line at the same spot here, I should... Let me put the needle down, make sure... Oh, no, I'm not right. And start to sew. I should be able to make a rectangle. And then let's pivot that. You can, in the settings, actually keep the needle down while you pivot as well. Um, what's on the, sc uh, the screen at the moment? Don't bother rushing out, Joe, you're right. 
um, there's, uh, it's asking me if I want the same size of stitch. So if I say, yes, I want the same size of stitch, the machine, I'll show you, the machine will automatically stop. So press OK after it's stitched that amount of stitches. So if I want to make a perfect square, I'll just click, yep, I want to do that. So when it comes, there you go, my foot's still down to the floor. And the machine's just locking the end of the stitch. And because I've programmed it, uh, when I press the stop button, it's done another line of stitching exactly the same length as this one. So you can make a complete frame out of them. Um, that's another one of those. Have a play with it when you get it home. I did make a perfect box when I did that at home. I should have brought it in to show you. Um, but I say have a play and have a play with the different types of stitches that you can use on here as well. So we've had a look at the memory. We've had a look at tapering. Let's go back again to the beginning. Should we take a look at the alphabet? We'll do a block one because that's nice and clear for you to see. And we will put in, so I've got that yellow in the background, so it's kept all the settings that I put in there. Um, D, E, B, B, I, E. These are spaces, so I can put a space there. And then S, H, O, R, E. I think I've spelt that right, but I'm, I'm not really sure. But if I click under here, that brings up all of my writing. So if I've got lots of stitches, lots of decorative stitches, I just want to double check, or I'm a little bit concerned that I didn't actually um, uh, get the spelling right, then that takes me into a preview mode before I start sewing. Recommended foot. And again, if I wanted to, oh, on this one, you can't alter the width and the, the size or anything like that. Decorative stitches you can do. And then I'm just going to put my foot down. Oh, better turn that around so I've got a bit more fabric it's running off the end. And then so this is so quick as well. So I, I do like a quick sewing machine. So quick to start, remember you set that in the settings and quick to sew. So you can also, I mean, I've, I've just got letters in there, but you could also um, add images. Oh, I'm going to press the lock stitch. I just got to the end there. And it'll cut the thread and lift the foot. See how accurate that is? And remember, you've got four fonts in there. So you can have, oh, you can have so much fun with the machine. I want to show you some of those um, decorative stitches as well. If you go into the, into play, um, so decorative quilt, bridge, play. These have got words on them. Um, so you can write out handmade stitch, love, sweet. Um, they're all on here, look. So let's look at, oh, Janet says this is a dream machine. Oh, you're not kidding. Let's do the handmade one. And I'm going to do the lock stitch at the end. So you can program that. Um, am I still on? Oh, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want you. I want you. I'm going to bin that. I want handmade. That'll do. Um, handmade. Should have a width, really, shouldn't it? Let's do a space. And then we've got, oh, we'll do love. And we can sew. So again, you can store those as a memory. You can st stitch these out individually if you wanted to. And it's quiet. And it's barely vibrating. Such a pleasure to use the machine, seriously. And there we go. And look how clear those are. It, it almost looks like that's been written with a, with a pen, doesn't it? It's so fine. It just makes the most beautiful stitches. Right, let's have a look what else we're going to show you. So that's memory, that's mirror imaging. Let's go back, come out of that. 
back again. Oh, while I have a look at the screen, can I just show you what happens when you switch the machine off and then back on again? Because remember, it saves them. We didn't see that before. So machine off, machine on. And look, did I want to resume the last pattern? No, I don't. I want to start all over again. And so I'm right back to the beginning again. So it, it's so once you've once you start using it and you go into all of the different settings and you use all the different stitches and have a look through your manual and, and have a have a play with the different stitches and see how they look and program them together. There's so much in I mean, this is a really thick manual, it's a lot thicker than any of the other manuals from the machines that we've had. Um, but you really can you know experiment, make the whole thing very personal. That's what I love about it. Um, right. So Oh, oh, we've got another attachment for you as well. Have a look at, have a look at that. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I had a moment of excitement when I discovered this. Are you ready? It's got a really bright light. And it really does help. That shines directly at the area that you're working. Is that amazing? And it just pushes away. I, I know it's only a little thing, but I just, I had a, had a squeak. So if you pull it out and then just tilt it down a bit like so, it, it completely illuminates all of this area. You don't have to use it, slides away when you don't want it, but you're going to find that so useful. I think that's incredible. Let's have a little free motion embroidery. And we've got all these different feet that you can use um, for free motion. Oh, and then we'll have a look at the plate as well. Oh, there's so much. Um, right, I'm going to use... I am going to use the open-toed one, because that's what I'm used to. Haven't done this on this machine. I've had it at home for days, but there's so much. So let's take this ankle off here. So, so that looks off there. This is the one that sits around the needle bar. So that goes on there and that screws up there. And then, right, let's have a look. I'm going to take a bit of quilting. I'm sitting down. That doesn't happen, does it? On a very, on a very high stool. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, so, Let's pop that under there. Can't quite reach the foot pedal now, but you know. Um, and um, I want some free motion embroidery stitches. So I'm going to do a zigzag, which is M. That will do. And I'm going to take the feed dogs down, which is just around the side here. All right. And then I'm going to take the foot pedal out because I can't reach it because I'm sitting down. So we'll press start. It's telling me to raise the feed dog. I don't want to raise the feed dog because I want to do some free motion. But it's just warning me. So now I can backwards and forwards and make my own designs like so. But what I wanted to play with, I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Like that, let's see how that looks. Mm, that's a bit more like it. And I'm going to use the knee lifter, which is normally used for the, um, to lift the foot pedal up, it goes in there. You can even adjust the knee lifter so that it's at the right angle for you. Right. I might have got this wrong, I haven't done this before. Sorry, Jane. And then as we start to move that, it goes narrower and wider. I think I might be on the wrong stitch for that one. So when you're in free motion mode, you can start to taper the stitches by moving the 
Neely. Need to have a look at that one. So you've got the taper stitch that I showed you before where I made a, a mark, but when you're doing free motion embroidery, you can actually move the, um, the stitches with the knee lifter at the front so that they, you can make like grasses and petals with them. That's a really unusual feature and it's something that, again, is really fun to do. So I, I love free motion embroidery. Um, I like to kind of play with it and paint with it and um, create pictures and I do applique with it. It's just so much fun. So let's just go back to a straight stitch for this one again. That will do. And away we go. So it's just telling me that the feed dog's down. But you, if you're stippling your own quilts, maybe. If you are doing pictures, if you want to make larger letters than the alphabet that you have in here, then you can do it with this machine. I'd invest in some gloves as well, to be honest, some quilters gloves when you're doing this. It helps to stop the, the fabric all bunching up as you're sewing. But you see how quick that is as well? Let's snip you off. So really, a really quick machine to sew. Just try and keep moving it all at the same pace and then you should get the stitches all around about the same length as well. So I'm going to take you off again. We will no doubt be back with this machine again because I want to show you the, um, the software that comes with it. You, you can literally create your own stitches. I just haven't had time to have a go at it this week, but I will do. I'm really looking forward to that. You could have anything you want. Oh, now we've got something else to show you, um, which is a circular attachment with the machine and it'll be inside um, the accessory compartment at the front here. There's, there's a pin. And there are two little holes in the bed of the machine. Now that's so that you can sew around in circles. So you put your fabric in there, you pin through it. And as you're sewing, it'll make your fabric go in a circle, but you can only do that in two sizes. So we've got something for you, which will enable you to make those circles in any size you like, up to 10 inches across. And it's this one. So this is your circular sewing device. This is so clever. I need to just find a piece of fabric with some stabiliser on the back. Bear with me. Um, if you're sewing very fine fabric, it'll all bunch up. So you'll need to put stabiliser on the back. I've just got some um, tearaway adhesive that I've stuck on the back of here. So, what I've done with my scissors. I'll just cut this fabric down a little bit. There was a picture on the um, Sound Street fans page of somebody that had used the circular foot uh, to quilt, I think it was a bag, which looked really effective, but you can use decorative stitches on it as well. So let me just smooth that down a bit, sorry. So this attachment will fit on any of the Elners that we have on Sewing Street. So if you've already bought a machine, you know that it's going to fit. And it's going to sit inside the bobbin case. So flick the lid off. Don't lose that. And then take this off. Sorry, I should have it out of the packet ready. And there's two bits. So you've, you've got the, um, the actual thing and you've got a screw at the side as well. And there's a pin under there, which is incredibly sharp. So this sits just on top of the bobbin casing. And there's a screw hole at the side here. And that holds it in place. There you go. So it doesn't have to be overly tight. Use your screwdriver if you need to. And then you can measure the diameter of your uh, of your circle over here. So let's make it a five inch. Clip that in place, so a little lever on the side there to secure it. Take the pin cover off. You'll mark on your fabric where you need that to go. That is very sharp, so be careful with it. Cover it back up again. And I'm going to try um, 
a decorative stitch with it. So let me go on to here, decorative, what shall we do? I'm going to do vines and then press start. Oh, my feed dogs are down still. Press start. And it's sewing in a circle. Again, remember to put some stabilizer on the back if you do have fine fabric, um, because it will bunch up somewhat. And just carry on until you get back to the beginning. Just move all those out of the way. Now, all of this is in your instruction book, remember. Um, sorry, with the instructions that come with that foot. Let's cut that off. And it will fit any of the Elna machines that, we've, that we bring you. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. So let's move that across. Move that in there. And I'm going to use a different design. Let's do hearts and press start. You'll have to look um, at where the design finishes. It might overlap a little bit. But this could be zigzags, it could be a straight stitch. If you're quilting, you're going to be able to create some beautiful effects with it. Um, maybe you're just making coasters. Um, circles notoriously difficult to sew. Difficult to draw, difficult to sew, but this gives you a perfect circle every single time. Those hearts look so pretty. So I might even make some fabric flowers out of those. That would be a nice idea. Completely decorated, maybe in all different colours of thread. There is, um, by the way, I don't know if I should say, on the back of the packaging when you get it home, this will all be sealed, it'll be taped up. That is an actual size of the bobbing cover. So if you're not too sure, I mean, this is made for Janome's and it's made for Elner's. If you're not too sure whether you've got the right machine or not, before you open the packaging, because we're not going to have it back again if you break the packaging, you can try that and just make sure that it's exactly the same as your machine. And if it's not, you can send it back to us. I didn't say that. <laughs> but with older machines, it's not going to fit. It has to be the drop-in bobbin type. So, and any of the machines that you bought from us here at Sewing Street is going to fit perfectly. This is just so quick. Isn't this a, such a delight of a sewing machine? I think it's beautiful. I do have sewing machine envy, I have to say. But a perfect pivot for perfect circles you're getting with that foot. <laughs> right, just about back to the beginning, that was a lengthy one. And again, you might get a little bit of an overlap there. So I'll press the lock button on the machine and that'll stop it when it gets to the end of the heart. Let's, oh, it's going to cut it automatically because that's how I set it. So I'll take the pin out of there. Whoops, take my fabric out of there. And those are my perfect circles. That was a really good size for those hearts because you can't really tell where I stopped and started. You can, you can tell on, the, on this one that it's overlapped a bit. But they do look lovely when you're quilting and you can kind of arrange them so they're overlapping like a, a spirograph effect. So cover that pin up there, that is incredibly sharp. And it's a fine pin, so it's not going to leave a big hole in the middle of your work either. Probably why it's so sharp. So this comes off there. That goes back on there. And there we go. Okay, now let's give you some of the, oops, some more details about your 780. Remember, it's the first time you've seen it today live on, um, on Sewing Street, exclusive to us as well. So don't worry about shopping around. You're getting a two-year guarantee with it. But let's have a look at some of your specifications. You have an extremely large space. It's, uh, it's actually an inch bigger than the 720. It's 11 inches for your throat uh, space area, so it's great for quilting. Um, you've got your dual feed plus system. So an extraordinary, oh sorry, guys, multiple layers of fabric, that's your, your like your walk-in foot. Um, the professional HP foot and HP needle plate, um, so that's going to allow you to do really accurate and neat, pucker-free um, straight stitching. 
You've got your adjustable ruler foot, so you can do ruler work with it as well without, without having to go and buy any more special feet. Free motion quilting. Now there's lots of different feet that you can use, open toe, closed toe. All of these are explained again in your manual. Memorised quilting seaming function, so you can efficiently stitch a large number of blocks in the same size. Honestly, there's so much. There's more. And these are all of the accessories that come as standard. Gosh! So yeah, loads of feet, look at all of those. Um, so you've got extra needles in there, you've got all of those different um, free motion quilting feet, uh, buttonhole foot with stabiliser plate, you've got your professional um, throat plates as well, you've got three of those in total. Um, extra wide extension table, that's included. Um, a thread cutter switch, you've got your thread cutter foot paddle as well. You do have an instructional DVD, so do have a look at that when you first get it home. That's um, that's really in informative. It's worth having a look at that before you get sewing. And um, you've got your thread cutter, so I've done that one, haven't I? There's loads. Oh, we've got more. <laughs> Whoa. So um, it's a computerized sewing machine offering outstanding quality and an astonishing number of high level features. Um, 350 stitches in total. You've got 11 buttonholes. Um, oh gosh, 1060 stitches per minute. That's a very fast machine. Nine millimeter sewing width as well. So that's the, the width of your stitch, which is really big if you want it to be. You've got your full colour high definition touch screen, really simple to understand, very intuitive. Um, automatic press a foot lift, you don't have to use that if you don't want to, but it will automatically lift. That's a, that's a feature that might take a bit of getting used to, but you'll love it. Um, adjustable program or thread cutter. So it's, it's got all of these features, but you don't have to use them if you don't want to, which is, which is what I like. Um, you can kind of, if, if you're upgrading from a more basic machine, you can almost tailor make this into the more basic machine and then upgrade it as you sew, as, as you're improving, if you, if you understand what I mean. But it is incredibly simple to use. So let's have another play, which is what you'll do when you get it home. It's all about playing. Oh, I was going to show you as well the, the plate. This slides off here. Off you come and then when you press this button here the plate pops off so then you, you can replace it with the um, with a high performance plate this is all the gubbins if you need to clean it you can oh there, there's a warning that's come on as well just to tell me that I've taken the plate off switch the machine off when you do that and just give it a, a little bit of a dust with your with your lint brush you do get a lint brush included as well and then when you pop this back on again you've got an extra high presser foot lift there too if that helps you go out the way then pop that in press it down click into place um, please make sure the proper presser foot is attached is what it's telling me Oops. So it's almost, it's almost like it's talking to you. Oh, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. And then that goes under there. So, okay, we know about you. Remember, you've got all of the stitches right in front of you, but they're explained in the different chapters here as well. And I, I really like that feature because I want to take you into the, the T-shirt one again. Um, so just click on the picture of the little T-shirt. And then you've got all of these different categories. So as a new sewer, maybe, you're going to find this really helpful. Um, so if you want to, let's go down again. Let's do a plique. What are the best stitches for a plique? Oh, I don't really know. Well, here you go. Those are they. So we've got um, blanket stitch, different types of blanket stitch. And we've got two pages of different stitches that you can use. Two zigzag stitches, different um, positions there. Let's go back again and have a look at patchwork. What's the patchwork one? Oh, you've got a straight stitch, or you can do the lockomatic, so it automatically locks at the end of each one. Um, and your piece length, it says here, look, it can be uh, memorised, so you can make multiple pieces, and, and the machine knows that it's going to all do the same size. And you've got a locking stitch there as well. Um, quilting. Oh gosh, there's so much in this one. Um, a clasp stitch is quite a nice stitch for quilting. It'll just stitch out one stitch like that. Uh, do you want to have a look? We can, we can do that. Come here. There we go. So let's just 
message. That's it. The machine stopped all by itself. <laughs> Let me show you again. <laughs> so we'll move it across and then just press, press go. <laughs> Poor Joe. Again, I haven't, I haven't even, well, I haven't got the foot pedal plugged in, so I haven't done anything there. So the needle goes up, the foot goes up, and there's my little clasp stitch. So let's. It's very tempting to try and put the foot down all the time when you're used to doing that and it automatically does it on this machine. There are different styles of clasp stitches as well. So that's clasp stitch one. Clasp stitch two looks like a snowflake. Oops, what's that saying? Bobbin thread may not be sufficient. Oh, I've got less than a half a meter of bobbin thread left. I think I've got enough just to do this one. Thank you for telling me that. But it says bobbin winding is recommended. Don't want to. Now I preset that, remember, if you were watching earlier on, I, I preset the, um, the length of bobbin remaining to be half a metre. So when that alert comes up, I know that it's time to change the bobbin. Uh, with top loading bobbins like this, the idea is that you can see inside them so you can see how much thread you've got left. But when you're sewing, you can read this up with fabric. I, I did it only yesterday, actually, when I was doing those diagonal lines for the, um, uh, the fabric slasher that we did in the last hour. And I, sew, I think I sewed two complete diagonal lines across the fabric and then realised I got no bobbin thread. Oh, that was frustrating. We've got three clasp stitches. Let's see what this one looks like. In fact, we've got four clasp stitches. And again, automatically stopping, automatically cutting the thread, automatically lifting the, the foot. Well, that's a nice one. What a lovely way of quilting. Oh, let's have a look at number four while we're there. Haven't used these before. After spending days playing with the machine, there's still so much. So if you're, if you're stuck at home, it, oh, it'll take you weeks of, uh, weeks of entertainment just learning all of these different stitches and these different techniques. That's a nice one as well. So imagine that was actually quilting your fabric. Wouldn't that be amazing? And again, you can, you can adjust these. You can adjust the length, you can adjust the width. So let's go back to the t-shirt again. Uh, a rolled hem. Now gathering, that's an interesting one as well because there's, there's a couple of types of gathering that are on here. One of them is a regular gathering, so it's automatically set the stitch to a long stitch, which is what you use for gathering. Or there's e-stitching, and e-stitching is something that you'd use around um, maybe the top of the sleeve if you're inserting that into a garment. And it is gathering, but it doesn't gather the fabric. So you'll need to literally ease the fabric over the thread to make it shorter, but without causing any puckers or anything in there. So again, you choose a stitch on here and it'll automatically set everything to the correct stitch that, that you need, the stitch length, the tension, everything that's already preset. That's really interesting. Um, over edge stitching, it'll ask you if you're going to stitch an over edge stitch, do you want to stitch woven, stretch or knit, um, or is it a heavy duty kind of fabric? You don't get that in a manual normally, and you don't normally get that when you're looking at stitches on the, on the top of your machine, advising you which type of fabric is going to be best for the stitch that you're using. So all in all, I, I just think you've got an amazing opportunity. If you're the quilter, if you're the dressmaker, if you're the homemaker, a lot of money for a beginner sewer, but a beginner sewer would be able to use this machine. It's, it's so simple, but the potential with it, there's, there's just so much going on here. Um, it's quiet. It's very pretty. This is the large area that we were saying about when you had a look at all of the specifications. This is 11 inches, so it's perfect for quilting because you've got lots of space there. Remember, you've got that huge extension table included as well, which is just too big for our table um, with the seam guide on that as well and, and that's a nice way everything about this is is good and solid and well built you have a two-year warranty from Elna with the machine you have support Elna are based in um, Stockport in Cheshire so you've got a UK helpline there and Jane from Elna is going to be popping into the studio to film some more videos with the features because, like I said, you've seen now there is 
so much to do with this machine. There is no way that you can cover all of that in an hour. So she's very kindly offered to make a video for us as well. So you'll be able to take a look at that by the time you get your machine home. I'm going to be back with you again tomorrow morning. Um, so we've got a tools hour at eight o'clock. My sewing machine, dust cover and drawstring bag panels are back in a new colorway at nine o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll be taking a look at, uh, at Moda Fabrics. So enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.